Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one-minute time check, stations. On the Hawkeye Sports Network, from Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Hy-V. Score big savings with the new Hy-V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community, Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Colville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the University of Iowa, it's baseball time in Iowa City. Live from Dwayne Banks Field, it's the series opener between the Western Illinois Leathernecks and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Home sweet home. After spending 30 of the last 36 days traveling and on the road, the Hawkeyes thankfully return home. Iowa will host series in three of the next four weekends. Despite a one and three road trip against Jacksonville State and Georgia, it, it seems like Iowa's pitching is improving. The offense showed a couple of signs of high levels, high level production, but were held in check at times over the weekend. The Hawkeyes are no doubt battle tested and they prepare for conference play and some time at home. All goals remain intact as Iowa moves into its final non-conference series before Big Ten play. It's Western Illinois and Iowa, the Leathernecks and Hawkeyes, live from Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City, with first pitch coming in a few minutes. A rich series history between Iowa and Western Illinois meeting today for the 108th time. Iowa leads the all-time series 77-28-2. The last time these two programs met was a couple of years ago in 2022. Iowa beat Western Illinois 11 to 1 in seven innings. The first meeting was all the way back in 1934. Iowa was victorious, seven to nothing. A quick look at Western Illinois before we get into more pregame coverage. Western Illinois, they're four and eleven overall. They uh, were swept last weekend by Northern Kentucky. Lost all three games to Northern Kentucky, but they did split a midweek against the Cincinnati Bearcats. They're under the direction of first-year head coach Terry Davis. As a team, the Leathernecks bat 212. Batting average of 212, slugging 342, on base percentage 346, prone to the strikeout, 148 strikeouts this season compared to 50, uh, 80 walks. They'll be without their best offensive player today, Maxton Polad. He will not play for the Leathernecks. He was coming in batting 364 with six doubles and 13 RBIs, which led the Leathernecks in all three of those categories. 
had a couple of home runs on the season, but he will not play today. We'll see if he plays the rest of the series after today. Uh, the pitching staff for Western Illinois, an ERA of 10.13. They've struck out 97 batters. They've walked 107. Today, the Hawkeyes will see left-handed starting pitcher Jason Buell. He's 0-2 on the season with a 9-flat ERA. He's allowed six home runs, so when he does throw it over the, the heart of the plate, teams have done some damage. We'll see if Iowa goes with a patient approach to force him into that funnel or if uh, they have a few more free-swinging participants offensively today. Iowa 7-9 on the season. They've lost three of the last four, trying to right the ship with a home series against Western Illinois beginning today. Tomorrow we'll have a doubleheader starting at noon. Two games will close out the series with the Leathernecks tomorrow and moving the game from Sunday due to cold temperatures. Series opener between Western Illinois and Iowa coming up in just a little bit right after this break. John will talk with Reese Moore. Iowa catcher. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hey, it's your friend, social media. You know, where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting because we all have struggles and challenges like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. Talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to. Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Yeah. Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel, good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Hawkeye Free Game. I'm here with Reese Moore. Reese, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me on. So we were just we were just kind of chatting. Tell me a little bit about you know last year was was a redshirt year for you, so so you didn't play for a guy that I assume at Van Meter probably played a lot of different sports. What was it like to actually sit out and watch? Yeah, it was definitely a lot different. Um, obviously, uh, breaking my hand bone last year it wasn't definitely uh, part of the plan, but. Um, I just decided I was a little bit uh, far behind with that putting me out all fall. I didn't play anything in the fall, put me out uh, a little bit in the winter. And then uh, I just decided I wasn't uh, where I was needed to be to play. And the coaching staff kind of agreed with that. And I decided to redshirt. Um, it was definitely uh, a little bit different experience, but uh, one that really paid off. Um, I learned a lot from last year. Obviously, sitting out, um, college baseball is a lot different than Iowa high school baseball. So um, there's definitely some learning curves there, and uh, I think it really paid off. So what did you learn sitting behind Cade Moss and, and kind of watching how he handles games? Um, I learned a lot from Cade. He's been kind of uh, one of the guys that I've looked up to behind the plate, for sure. Uh, he does a fantastic job back there. So um, I would just always kind of pick his brain on uh, what he was thinking. Uh, obviously, Ty Snap too, had a lot to do um, with my uh, developmental. But uh, those two guys have definitely got me uh, to the place I am today. And I don't, I just don't know if I would be here where I'm at today without them. What's it like catching this staff with, with 
how good a stuff some of these guys have, how hard they throw. With, what's that like? That's, oh. that's definitely different than <laughs> yeah. Iowa high school baseball. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. I think uh, I remember my first pen here. I ended up catching Obi, and uh, I don't think I caught many balls, but uh, <laughs> from there, um, obviously, we're weekend partners now. Um, so I guess I guess I've grown a little bit from not catching many balls <laughs> to catching him on uh, Saturday or Sunday. So. Um, because yeah, the goal is aspect. you go you, you go from not even not even catching it to now you're trying to steal strikes, yeah, right? Exactly, I mean, that's exactly. A, that's a big that was a big change for me is like when I first got here, uh the staff's uh really good. Obviously Marcus, uh Brody, Obi, and even the bullpen. Um they got they got some of the best stuff in the country. Um so it took it took a lot of learning, but um the big thing for me was definitely confidence, just having confidence back there and uh just keeping trying to keep the ball in front of me at, at first and now it's now it's stealing strikes so um i definitely uh have learned a lot from these guys so with the broken hammy bone last fall a fall and a half ago how was that then the transition to hitting it at the college level um yeah it was definitely different because i'd i'd never been injured before um it nagged me for quite some time uh i would say uh Cade's obviously going through that right now but it, it definitely took some time and uh obviously coming back i just there was a few times where i just didn't uh think my swing was where it needed to be so um but it ended up coming around i struggled a little bit this summer and then uh this fall getting back in iowa city working with the coaching staff we figured some things out and uh i've really uh turned my swing around and i i just it feels a lot better in the box just confidence wise um, and from swing aspect and mechanics. Did so you feel like it took me it took you maybe almost that year to, you know, we were, we were kind of joking, we were calling you 473 after that <laughs> home run in Jacksonville, but you know, find, kind of finding that power and the stroke back too from the hammy? Yeah, definitely. I lost some I lost some power for sure. Obviously, with that being my bottom hand, um, it wasn't the most pleasant thing, uh, especially with it hitting the knob all the time and sw- trying to swing uh, for power. It wasn't the most... Uh, pleasant thing. Well, you did pretty good at the beginning of the year, but finding doubles in the gaps and and uh, turning into extra base hits, that hasn't been a struggle yet for you. Yeah, I'd, I'd say just the main thing is just um, just catching barrels, uh, finding the barrel, um, and then the ball, the ball find find its way. It'll drop for hits. So uh, that's kind of just been my main uh, thing I've been thinking about right now in the box is just see how many barrels I can catch. Just hit the ball hard and it's gonna land. So last thing for you, and, and not to not to induce a recruit, look out, not to reduce a recruiting violation for you. But uh, your brother's here today on a, on a visit. Uh, you, you, you get you you putting in the good word. You want to you want to play a year two or? <laughs> oh yeah, um, Cole. Obviously being here on a visit, it's, it's very exciting for me uh, and for him. Uh, he's put in a lot of hard work this off season. Um, he's really seen his numbers jump and. Uh, Obviously, growing up, Hawkeye fans all our life. This is this has kind of been the goal to make it here and uh, be a Hawkeye. So um, we'll kind of see where where he'll end up and where he'll land. But uh, I think he's really excited, and I'm I'm excited for him too. You, you said you couldn't answer the tough question because he's a pitcher and you're a catcher, so there wasn't uh, there wasn't a who which brother's better, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I had my fair share of innings on the mound in high school, but. I don't think I'm necessarily the caliber that he was, but I think it'd definitely be an interesting matchup. I I, I know I want to face him uh, sometime. So you want to hit off him in the inner yeah, squad, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely <laughs> want to hit off him. I he thinks he can strike me out, but um, we'll <laughs> we'll see. I think I think it'd be a good matchup. That's for sure. Sounds good. I'll let you go, Reese. Thanks Thank for you. your time, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Reese Moore, Hawkeye catcher. We'll be back with more Hawkeye pregame. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. 
Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat. Nice. Which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. A bag of corn is, well, a bag of corn. Unless it's a bag of Pioneer brand chrome seed corn. Then you're dealing with the most optimized yield potential, agronomic performance, and insect protection the Pioneer lineup has to offer. A bag that will make life easier for you. Eight bushels per acre easier. And much harder for rootworms than the competition. Pioneer brand chrome products. Field proven and ready for yours. Visit pioneer.com slash plant chrome. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. The series opener with Western Illinois from Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, uh, good to be back home after a long, long time on the road. Yeah, and this last one seemed uh, seemed like it was forever after the first three. But, no, it is good to be home. Um, you know, we a uh, bit of a short week, you know, getting back Wednesday. And, and then uh, with us being gone on Monday, which is – Man, and all of the people know this, you got to have a mandatory off day with the NCAA. And when you're on the road, they even if you give them an off day, they don't count it as an off day. So we had to have a captain's practice yesterday, um, which is not um, exactly what you would want. But um, here we are, a pretty decent day, windy, blustery, but sun's out and uh, good to be home. The uh, the last week uh, in, in Georgia and, and Alabama, maybe not the win total, you were looking for certainly not the win total you were looking for but uh did, did you feel your team make some strides make some positive steps forward yeah i definitely did i i mean it isn't where we need to be obviously on the pitching side uh but we did cut we cut you know a lot of the free bases down uh we still had some blips that hurt us and and, and that's the thing we just have to get to a point where we that's the norm playing really clean baseball and that the, the, the rarity is that day you have 15 free bases. And uh, unfortunately it was becoming the other, you know, where it was 15 to 20 free bases and you know, there's just no chance to win when you, when you're doing that. Um, and then the, the unfortunate thing for us this past week was that we ran into um, a team, two teams that played really well. Um, you know, George is on a hot streak or 17 and one and they, they played really well against us in um, Jacksonville State. The, the, the first game where, where it was stopped because of rain and it looked like it was in hand and, and to, to get walked off on a three-run pitch hit home run, that's a painful way to lose. And, and then on Sunday, just ran into a, to a Jacksonville State team that played extremely well and pitched amazing. They didn't, they didn't have one free base going into the eighth inning. And any ball we hit was bad luck and, you know, it just – just was uh, their day and not ours and you know there's nothing you can do um, as long as I've done this you can't make things happen you know you can't make a hot streak happen or even a cold streak happen they just happen and and they have to they have to happen on their own and I think that uh, you know at some point you're going to see that with this ball club and hopefully it starts today. Uh, when you look back at the the first month of the season, being on the road, um, a lot of tough competition, really strong schedule. That part of it has to has to favor your group heading down the the conference play. Uh, you know, battle tested, battle hardened. Well, you would think so, and that's the reason you go out and play that schedule. And you know, I I think we all felt we would handle it better and win more games, but um, we didn't. Uh, but to your point, you know, I mean, we shouldn't be intimidated by anybody. Um, you know, with the teams that we played, and really, outside of you know the bullpen struggling um, to throw strikes, every other part of our game has has really 
excelled. I mean, we've played really good baseball defensively. Uh, the offense is further ahead uh, than, than what I thought it would be with the pitchers that we were seeing and the teams we were facing. I think we, we you know, really did a, a nice job there. Uh, base running, hustle, effort, really everything. And, and starting pitching for the most part has been solid. There's been some blips here and there with that too. But um, if we can just um, find four or five guys here that we can hang our hats on in the bullpen, we should be in good place. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Banks this Friday afternoon. Okay, Western Illinois in town for, for three games. Uh, a rich history with the Leathernecks, but what do we know about this year's team? Well, you got a new coach this year who's, I think, doing a good job. Um, really been following, really been following uh, their progress, and you know they they haven't they haven't won a whole bunch of games, but they have competed really well, and and I, they're playing really hard. Um, you know they're shorthanded uh, on the mound, mm. and you know they do have a legit closer who has four saves, and you know, you know for, in our situation you, you definitely don't want to be behind late in the game. You want to. You want to get on him and stay ahead, uh, so that you don't have to see see him, uh, you know, with a save opportunity. You know, hopefully, in game three uh, tomorrow, second game of the doubleheader. Hopefully, they have to use him early in the game so that they don't, you know, burn him uh, before we, you know, before we see him. That would be ideal. Um, but they're gonna they're gonna do whatever they have to do to try to hang around and be in the game, and they're gonna play extremely hard and they're gonna battle and. Uh, you know, hats off to their new staff and the job that they're doing, that's for sure. You talked about Iowa starting pitching, your team starting pitching. Uh, Got to be nice for them to get some home starts uh, in the traditional way when you get your first home series like this. Uh, Brody Brett getting the start on the mound for Iowa today. Yeah, and we need to get Brody a W. You know, he's, <laughs> he's been snake bit. Um, you know, either didn't quite get to the fifth or got to the fifth and we blew the lead and um, you know, hopefully today's the day that, that Brody gets us past the fifth and and we can find a way to get him a W and get rolling. How do you feel about your team's offense coming into this series against a, a um, Western Illinois team with an ERA up over 10? You know, we we um, we slowed a little the last two games, as you well know. You know, the, as we talked about, uh, Jacksonville State pitcher did a wonderful job and, and uh, pitched us really tough. And uh, I think we only had, what, three hits in that game. And then we only came out with six hits against uh, Georgia. We did see some good arms. Um, and we did threaten, though, throughout the game, which was good to see. But um, we didn't we didn't just pound the cover off the ball. So, um, you know, we had a couple guys that started the season really hot, and they've kind of moderated to more of a normal, you know, more of a normal uh, situation. And then uh, we got a couple guys that are scuffling a little bit. Um, you know, we just need to we just need to go out and find quality at bats and uh, take our walks if they're going to give them to us and take advantage of the free bases and um, get back to being able to, to, to cause pressure with uh, with the running game and steal some bags and it'd be nice to get get going with all that again and um, hopefully we can do that this weekend. We're going to face a a guy that's different than what we've seen, um, um, you know, than uh, with Buell, yeah. Buell, the left-hander, he's just going to sling it up there, change ups. Uh, he's got 20 inches of run on his fastball, but it's like 82, 83. So he's going to be a guy that um, you're going to have to force to get in the zone. He he's going to be successful if guys are chasing. Um, so technically, I mean, we should be a nightmare for him based on our our philosophy and how we plan and train, but. Um, we've we've both seen that go the other way, and then you know, you, for me, I always hate I always hate to see the the wind blow in. Yeah. When <laughs> uh, when we play a team that you know maybe you're better than because it's a neutralizer. Sure. The ball the only place the ball is carrying today is pretty much straight, you know, right field. I mean, not even the gap, but the last 30 feet of right field is where the ball is carrying. Everything else is getting knocked down pretty hard, um, and it's going to be that way all day tomorrow too. So. With all of our right-handers, it's um, you're not going to see much to the pull side with any power stuff. So we're going to have to really execute and battle our bat bats. Uh, a couple of uh, 
offensive players, you know, as you were alluding to, but uh, specifically uh, Sam Peterson and, and Reese Moore off to great starts. Sam Peterson's got a 27-game on-base streak going. <laughs> Reese Moore's got a 10-gamer and, and just putting traffic on the base pass, Coach. Uh, you know, those, that, two, those two guys are off to a, a fantastic start. You know, Reese is a little hotter right now than, than Petey is. Petey slowed a little bit with the, you know, three-hit games, and but he's, he's getting on base, and he's, you know, doing some damage doing some damage with extra base hits here and there and just both really good hitters and um, you know off to a good start doing a great job all right coach some keys to victory to get out in front of western illinois this weekend well the the, the big one for me is is uh, forcing be able to throw strikes you know and not not chasing on the edges a lot like we did at cornelius with jacksonville state we we kind of cave we kind of caved in um you know, maybe we should have made him take even, you know, because he was throwing strikes on the edge early, strikes on the edge early. Um, and I think if we would have took more pitches, he would have made some mistakes later in the count. But we never gave him that opportunity, and he was just pounding strike one, strike two. Um, same situation today. Um, if Buell's out, if, if Buell's living on the edges, we just have to let him stay there and not concede and not give in and, and really make sure that uh, we're prepared and ready to go when the ball is over the damaged part of the plate. That's one, and then um, anytime the wind's blowing like this, we need to do a good job defensively because crazy things can happen in the wind. And um, and that's one thing we didn't talk about, but I mean, we went we went on the last trip and played four four games, and um, I don't think we had an infield error in, uh, in any of the four games and have been playing pretty good defense. And, uh, and then just basically Brody throwing strikes and hopefully getting deeper in the game. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck today. Thanks, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Dwayne Banks Field today. The series opener with Western Illinois coming up in just a minute. We'll be back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, nice. which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field. Moments away from first pitch between Iowa and Western Illinois this weekend. The Leathernecks in town with a 4-11 and overall record. The Hawkeyes 7-9. and Three games set with Western Illinois. One strike. But uh, we'll have a doubleheader tomorrow. We'll play one game today, doubleheader tomorrow. Just too cold to play on Sunday. So we'll play two tomorrow in Iowa City. Come out to Banks and, and uh, spend your day with us beginning at noon, first pitch at noon against Western Illinois tomorrow. But business to take care of uh, first, John, let's let's get off to a good start in this series. Yeah, I, I'm not sad about that because then that's uh, a little bit uh, a little bit warmer and we get a uh, we get a day off. So uh, that'll be great, too. But but you know, just to be home is should be a good Once deal again, for the good, good deal for the guys. It's been uh, uh, it's been a long time, middle of middle of February that we got on the road and and been chasing somewhere every long weekend since. And so, you know, to, to get settled in, to get into a routine here, uh, will hopefully be a, a big benefit for the team. Talked about it with Coach Heller in pregame, but just for for Brody and Cade and Marcus to throw at their home field really for the first time of the season. That has to be uh, that has to be a significant positive. Well, to sleep in your own bed, get up, you know, not have to worry about what time is hotel breakfast, you know, to, to do your own thing. It's spring break week this week, so the guys didn't have to worry about any of that stuff either, uh, you know, getting to class this morning or, or yesterday morning. So, yeah, it, it, it should be a good chance to, to now start 
you know, obviously the Big Ten season starts next week, but to start what a more regular looking week um, without a bunch of airplane travel will look like going forward. It feels like that's what happened last year, right? Uh, the Hawks had a, a, a long non-conference and then it bled right into right into a, a conference play and, and Iowa got off to that slow start in in conference play so to, it's good to have the the home series first I know we had some home games last year too right before uh, playing Indiana and Maryland but uh well, but even those were weird because we had the one game that got moved to Kansas City, mm -hmm. uh, and then you came back and it, it you know, we're shoveling snow so that we <laughs> right. could play that other two games. So that wasn't exactly a normal looking yeah. series either, as you had to bust and finish up a game there. So uh, Western Illinois four and eleven, uh, new head coach Terry Davis in his first season. Don't know a ton about Western Illinois, but the stats are the stats for the Leathernecks. They bat 212 as a team, and they have a team ERA of 10.13. What do you know about the Leathernecks, John? Well, I know they got a good win against Cincinnati midweek, and, and so that's the... Uh, you know, th that's the important part is it's still baseball. It's still a team that, you know, you have to go do... You know what you do well, and, and if Iowa does what they do well, uh, even struggling a little bit, the statistics would say this is a, a a team that they can they can get after and feel a little bit better about. But if they don't throw enough strikes, um, you know, then then 212 becomes you know a bigger number, and and you know a little bit of wind blowing out, maybe kind of to the right field foul pole uh, for a team that doesn't hit. You know, they hit 12 home runs, I think Western, so it's not like. They don't have a big, big power bunch, so it's kind of that. You know, if I'm if I'm Coach McGrath, I probably look all my guys and just challenge them and go, you know what? They can't hit you. Go throw strikes, and they can't hit you. And if they prove you wrong, well, then start nibbling on edges. But but I think the most certainly certainly Brody's going to think I'm going to dominate you. Yeah, and, and we'll see Brody right off the rip here in just a few minutes. The starting lineups are being announced. We have the national anthem coming up in just a moment. Offensively see, uh, seems like a great positive opportunity for the Hawks to get back on track after a slow week. Get back on track, you know, find the, find the zone, um, you know, know where your strike zone is and, and try to dominate dominate that part of it. There's, there's a lot of walks in the, in the Western Illinois pitching staff. Um, and, and, and a lot of damage that gets done. So, you know, if Iowa can take advantage of some free bases, uh, you know, but you do that by, by being disciplined, sticking to your process and, and doing what you do well. See an aggressive approach on both sides uh, today for Iowa. Pitching, defense, and offensively with the batting. All right, the teams are out of their dugouts. We'll step aside for the national anthem. When we come back, we'll get you the starting lineups and first pitch, the series opener, Iowa and Western Illinois, coming up right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. Welcome back to the Nitrogen Stabilizers Draft. Up the night technology, first pick, just like the last 46 years. That's what we love about this sport. We just don't know. We know. It keeps nitrogen in the corn's root zone for eight weeks, compared with two weeks for others. With the first pick, farmers select. Up the night technology from Corteva AgriScience. Uh, that's it. I'm going for a pretzel. The pick is in. Optonite technology from Corteva AgriScience with InServe and Instinct Next Gen Nitrogen Stabilizers. How about that Anywhere. national anthem? All right, in the books. Moments away from first pitch between Western Illinois and Iowa this afternoon. Nice enough day, a little chilly because of the wind, but uh, not a cloud in the sky. Maybe one, just one small cloud in the sky in left center, but other than that, nice uh, spring day in Iowa City. Pretty good, you know, it's uh, funny, you know, the, the midweek games might have been a little bit better weather until the one that completely turned and it wasn't yeah 
but try yeah, to avoid those. <laughs> but yeah, that, and that's that's what we're doing on Sunday is we're avoiding those. I think we'd have had a uh, we'd had a real feel issue on Sunday. I think uh, if we if we'd have pushed there. So tomorrow is supposed to be similar to today, uh, except for the wind is really supposed to be blowing tomorrow, which you know, depending on the direction it blows is always interesting. Uh, you know, and a, and a challenge. You know, Coach Heller mentioned that because last year it seemed like we had we had wind everywhere we went in the spring, and it was blowing in. And it takes a uh, it takes a team that you think you have an offensive advantage, and you know, the wind can can minimize that. And so, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And, and again, if Iowa can maintain a disciplined approach and and create problems. All right, before we get you to today's starting lineups, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds, station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Western Illinois will bat first today. They'll be led off by Chris Heggie, the starting second baseman, followed by Liam Bushy and Adam Duran. J.R. Hevelin will be the D.H. today batting fourth. Kyrie Alexanders at third batting fifth. Brock Loomis over on the right side at first base. He'll bat sixth. Seven, eight, nine for W.I.U. Reese Davis, Grant Palmer, and Jackson Horn. For the Hawkeyes defensively, Raider Tellos at third, Michael Seegers at short, Gable Mitchell at second base, Blake Guerin gets the start at first. Outfield left to right, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf, and Andy Nelson. Catching behind the plate is Davis Kopp. And on the mound, starting for the Hawkeyes, right-handed pitcher from Ankeny, Brody Brecht. Four starts on the season, a 140 ERA, 19 and a third innings, nine hits allowed, five runs, three were earned. 15 walks, 42 strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 132 off Brody. Fastball is going to approach 100 miles an hour. Cutters right around 90. The splitter's a little over 90. Uh, and he's got the slider that's going to be right about 90 as well with with some, some pretty darn good action on it. So, you know, again, with Brody, it's it's not only the strikeouts, but it's can he, can he do it in, you know, four pitches instead of five, six, seven pitches so that from a Hawkeye perspective, can he get seven innings, eight innings into a game, you know, finally at some point later in the season, maybe find the first complete game. Looking forward to uh, Brody's start. Felt like uh, Mother Nature just had different plans for Brody and the Hawkeyes at, at Jacksonville State. And unfortunately, Jack Jacksonville State had different plans for how that game was going to play out. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll meet you there on that one. Yep. <laughs> we, basically, what we're saying is we we just felt shortchanged on Brody's start on Friday because of the weather that moved in. He only got through four innings, but man, he was dominating Jacksonville State the last time out. So we'll see how the approach is for Brecht against Western Illinois, a team with a, a 2.12 batting average, nearly double the strikeouts as they have walks. And a team missing their best hitter, 20% of their RBIs, almost 30% of their doubles in Max Poland. Chris Heggie leads things off. Right-handed hitter Brack deals for a strike on the outside corner. We're underway at 4.06 p.m. in Iowa City. 97-mile-an-hour fastball to get you started. Wind up of the pitch from Brecht. Same spot, fouled back to the screen. Nothing and two. If you like the first 97-mile-an-hour, and you might like the second one. Here it is again. <laughs> <laughs> no balls, two strikes. Brecht looks in for the sign from Cop. He's got it. Here's the pitch. Just high and out. Ball one. Good spot from Brody. Heggie didn't go after it. Heggie's a 275 hitter. He's drawn 12 walks. Done a nice job, but he has struck out nine times. Decent on base percentage of 434. Here's the one two. Chopper up the middle over Brecht's head. Seeger's charging from short. He'll field. He'll bobble it. No play. A tough transition in his glove there, and I would imagine that'll go as an error on Michael. Just couldn't uh, right had to hustle, got it on a got it on a good hop, but just couldn't transition from glove to hand. Knew he had to hurry a little bit. There was some speed getting down the line, but uh, a play we've seen Michael make a few times in his career. It is scored as an E6 on Seegers. Runner at first base for Liam Bushy, left-handed hitter. First pitch from Brecht, high ball one. 
Well, she's braver than I am as he stands right on top of the plate in that left-handed batter's box. I would, uh, you would think that Brecht would dial up the slider a couple times and back him off a little bit. Here's a ground ball left side through into left field. Tello was diving for it. It got through and runners at first and second for the Leathernecks right off the rip here in Iowa City. Well, and that's, you know, unfortunately, that's kind of the, the free base idea is, you know, now you get a, you get a seeing eye single. And that was weird fastball for Brody, just 95 there. So just 95, but down off his normal pace. And kind of a big spot here early. You don't want to give, don't want to give Western Illinois any confidence here. This is Adam Duran, the starting catcher, right-handed hitter, batting 205, but he's got six extra base hits on the season. Breck deals, outside corner, strike one. Duran was the Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Week in the opening week of the season, February 19th. Had a couple of home runs then. And nine walks, four hit by pitches, and just 13, 11 strikeouts. So, Brody's 0-1, waved at and missed. Hart slider low and out, nothing in two. I think that was actually the splitter. Not much spin and just kind of fell off there. All of a sudden looks good and drops away. Yeah. No balls, two strikes, nobody out top of the first. Runners at first and second for the Leathernecks. Fastball outside, gets away from Cop. He'll pick it up, no play. Runners at the corners now for the Leathernecks as Heggie scurries to third. Really great read from Heggie, not so great from Bush. Bushy as he stayed at first base. Good block by Cop on the ball that bounced there. Need that strikeout pitch that you were talking about earlier, John, the, the efficient, quick strikeout. Need one here, Brody. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Duran in the box. Brecht comes set, the pitch. Check swing, did he go? Yes, he did. There's the strikeout, one down. 96 mile an hour fastball off the plate. Not sure what Duran was talking to the home plate umpire about. He didn't ring him up. <laughs> Western Illinois wearing gray uniforms. They've got leatherneck spelled out in cursive across the chest with a, a thick line underneath it. Purple numbers on the back. Gray pants with a purple stripe down the side. One out, runners at the corners. First pitch just outside. Maybe a touch low from Brecht to J.R. Hevelin, the D.H., right-handed hitter. Iowa's got all white uniforms, script Iowa spelled out in black across the chest, gold baseball caps, the black bill for the Hawkeyes today. 1-0 pitch from Brecht, squaring to bunt is Hevelin, pulls it back, strike one on the outside corner. Hevelin has no walks and no hit by pitches on the year. Yeah, what does that tell you? I, yeah, I said it. <laughs> Sticking your neck out there a little bit, John. <laughs> I like it. We're all being aggressive today. I trust Brody. One ball, one strike, one out. Runners at the corners. The pitch from Brecht, Fa uh, pitch on the outside corner. I thought initially it was the fastball, but it it seemed like it put on the brakes as it got across the plate. Strike called one and two. I think he keeps throwing that cutter. The ball just kind of drops in there a little bit. Just outside to the right-handed hitter. Count even at two. Infield of Mitchell and Seegers up the middle. Pinching close to the bag in hopes of starting a quick double play. Iowa can get a ground ball. Two balls, two strikes. Brecht is ready. The right-hander deals. Check swing. He certainly went around. The home plate umpire sent it down for an appeal. It's another strikeout for Brecht. His second in a row. Yeah, there wasn't much wasn't much question about that one. I'm not really sure why why he asked there, but. Tim Cordell is our home plate umpire. Terry Helgett down the line at first. Shane Cannon out at second. Wayne Harris at third. Yeah, Tim, trust yourself. He definitely yeah. went around. Better, you don't need the help of uh, Terry down the line. Better safe than sorry, I guess, as long as you get the call right in the end. Two down for Kyrie Alexander. Starting third baseman for the Leathernecks. Still runners at first and third. Squares to bunt, pulled it back. Strike one right down the heart of the plate. Yeah, I mean, again, this is... You know, starting here, Alexander has the best batting average of the rest of the order, and it's 196. So oh, he, he all right. Just, he just need to go dominate the strike zone. Oh, one pitch. Outside, count even at one. Davis really setting up outside. They're 
the Hawks are trying to induce that weak contact on the outer half of the plate to these right-handed hitters. Well, and the early strike zone has been a ball or so off the plate to the outside, so. 1-1 one, one delivery. Grounded to Seegers at short. He gloves it, flips it to Gable Mitchell at second base for the force out. Special play there by Seegers. That one had a little funky spin as it floated to him at short. Good play, got over in the hole, was kind of a soft liner there, and really an accurate flip on the backhand side. So nice job from Michael to help atone for the error that started the inning. A couple of runners get on for Western Illinois, but they do not score. Brody Brecht gets out of the jam in the first. Andy Nelson will lead things off for the Hawkeyes when we come back. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Let's be honest, we all like to be noticed. Picture yourself striding into Kinnick Stadium, radiating both style and comfort, while fellow Hawkeye fans can't help but ask, where'd you get that shirt? With pride, you point to the big screen and reply, it's authentic brand. Discover the remarkable difference that apparel with the authentic brand label brings. Ask for it by name at your favorite boutique, spirit shop, or retailer. Or shop online at authentic-brand.com. It's time for a change in your style. It's time for authentic brand. Bottom of the first inning. Iowa coming to the plate. Andy Nelson, Sam Peterson, and Raider Tello do up. If any of those three get on, Reese Moore will come to the plate. Kyle Huxdorf would follow him, and Davis Kopp batting sixth for Iowa today. 7 8 9, Gable Mitchell, Blake Guerin, and Michael Seegers. Pitching for Western Illinois today is Jason Buell. Buell, a left-handed pitcher from Winnebago, Illinois. 0-2 on the season, four appearances. He has a nine ERA, 16 innings pitched, 22 hits, 20 runs. 16 of those are earned. He's walked 15 in those 16 innings. 12 strikeouts. Opponents hitting him at a 314 batting average. So, again, hold the zone here. It's a you know, little change here in the uh, at the top of the order. Interesting switch, getting Andy Nelson up there at the top to... Give him a shot to uh, stir the yeah. drink, so to speak. Yeah. Let's see. Just uh, maybe a little spark right at the top of the, the lineup. Uh, Buell has allowed six home runs this season as the left-hander is ready to fire it to Nelson. Just below the letters for a strike. As a staff, Western Illinois has given up 31 home runs. Seems like a lot. It is elevated. A one pitch to Nelson. Swing and a miss. Low corner of the zone. Yeah, two really good pitches so far. 84 mile an hour top of the zone, 79 mile an hour bottom corner of the zone. 0-2, oh, low and out. That's a ball. Yeah, Coach Heller talked about Buell not, not throwing hard, but very similar to Cornelius of Jacksonville State, who did a great job against the Hawkeyes uh, on Sunday. Nelson strikes out. Foul tip into the catcher's glove so very similar to Cornelius in terms of velocity mid 80s and works the corners of the of the zone and so force him to come to the middle force him to throw you better pitches to hit and then drive it so something to uh, take note of Iowa made that adjustment a little bit too late against Cornelius in Jacksonville State last weekend Peterson drives the first pitch he sees out to straightaway center Palmer is back. He's got it in front of the track, out number two. Yeah, straightaway center. The ball's not going to go anywhere today. That was 100 mile an hour off Petey's bat, but wind kind of blowing basically toward the Hawkeye bullpen, I would guess. You know, not, not quite straight in, but but certainly not really any help to center, maybe a little help to right. But that, your, your only chance of getting any wind aid is, is basically you know, the closer you get to 327 on the right field foul pole. Right. Here's Raider Tello. First pitch for a strike right across the belt. Nothing in one. No problem with the Hawkeyes taking a few pitches to feel out the zone. Feel about feel out uh, Buell just a bit. 
Downstairs to Tello. That time count even at one. Raiders Iowa's third baseman batting 309. Three home runs on the season. Low and out ball two from the left hander. Everything so far has been in fastball's been mid 80s. His off speed pitch has been right around 80. So not a lot of differential. So you can even get fooled a little and. There's a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, I agree with you, John. There, that pitch, for example, is 82. Now, what was that? Yeah, he split the middle <laughs> there. and Can't tell if it was a fastball or the changeup. Here's the 2-2 to Tello. Ground ball right back to Buell. Off the end of the bat, he'll underhand flip it over to first base, and the Hawkeyes go down 1-2-3 in the first. Scoreless through one. We're back for the second. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. 678 Brock Loomis, Reese Davis, Grant Palmer coming to the plate for Western Illinois in the second inning. Scoreless through one. The Leathernecks have a hit. The Hawkeyes have an error. Right handed batter. First pitch strike. Outside corner. We're just one panel over, John. That's. We have shifted the strike zone a bit. You just wonder, he, he, the uh, home plate umpire looking across the zone just a bit. A swing and a miss by Loomis. On the next pitch from Brecht, the home plate umpire over Cop's left shoulder. Looking a little bit from left to right over the plate. 0-2, oh, too far outside. Loomis doesn't go after that one. 1-2. One and two. You wonder if that impacts. I, I've kind of taken note of that, especially when we were on the road, uh, how that impacts the view of an umpire coming with the pitch coming into the glove. One, two pitch, fouled back to the pad. We'll do it again. Yeah, depending on which side you pick, you know, how you know, how tall you are relative to the to the catcher, all of those things. I mean and then you've got Brody throwing as hard as he throws and so you factor that in and we've got something. <laughs> whether whether you get the uh, the old two for flinching or how you do on all of those, I would think Brody doesn't get many high strikes because the umpire's got to trust cop to catch it. The 1-2 pitch, called third strike, outside corner. Brecked up to three strikeouts in the second. And he got the high strike. That was the slider, though. So or that, Again, I think that's a splitter. There's not much break on that one. He's really, really thrown kind of that splitter cutter a lot more. Have not seen much of the slider. I, I probably improperly called it uh, earlier today, but really haven't seen it too much. Swing and a miss by Reese Davis. I think that was the splitter, don't you think? I think so. I mean, 86 mile an hour, and the bottom just kind of falls out of it. Like a marble rolling off the table. Here comes the 0 1 from Brecht. Swing and a miss again by Davis. Starting left fielder for Western Illinois. And this is, a, I mean, this is exactly what you want Brody to do, particularly with the bottom end of this lineup. 0 2. Swing and a miss. There's your three pitch strikeout, John. And strategically, uh, if you feel that you have the advantage over a batter, you don't really need to throw that waste pitch, right? Right. I mean, and again, a waste pitch can still be 
around the zone. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to, sometimes you're trying to set up an eye line or do something completely different. But in this case, Brody should just be able to overmatch these guys. And that's kind of what you've seen so far with 97 right in the middle there. Strike one to Grant Palmer, the starting center fielder for Western Illinois. Wind up in the pitch. Line drive foul down the first baseline. I mean, you see where you see where Kyle Huxdorf's at in center field. He is shallow and he is well to the right side. And that's sometimes Brody gets kind of that tough luck. Every once in a while, somebody hits him hard. It's not like nobody squares him up, but but he gets a lot of rollers either through the infield or tough position, and it really requires the defense to be on their feet and well, or you know, on their toes and well positioned. 0-2 to Palmer. Outside, backhand, stopped by Davis behind the plate. One ball, two strikes, two outs, base is empty. The pitch from Brody. Calm third strike, outside corner. Brody strikes out the side in the second. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Reese Moore, Kyle Huxdorf, and Davis Kopp coming to the plate. Right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments, the proud moments, even the hard moments, they're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Okay, baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. The Hawkeyes went down quietly in the first, one, two, three, in fact. Jason Buell off to a good start for the Leathernecks. He's got the... Uh, Bottom of his pants pulled all the way up to right below his knees. He's got the stirrup socks that are purple with a gold band horizontally across his mid-calf. Western Illinois sporting purple ball caps with their signature W on the front panel. Reese Moore in the box. Count one and one to the Hawkeye DH today. We're not doing a very good job with the pitch clock. We just irritated the home plate umpire. Yeah, he gave a pretty emphatic twirl of the finger to get it started. Moore bloops one into center. Center fielder charging hard. It one hops him. Moore's trying to get to second. Now he slams on the brakes. Here comes the throw back to first, and Reese will get back safely. Aggressive turn. That's all right, but a bloop single for Reese Moore gets Iowa there. First hit. Good choice to jam on the brakes there and head back because he was he was not going to make it to uh, to second base without getting punched. This is Kyle Huckstorf into the box for Iowa. Huck batting up over 300, 305. Had a great uh, game against Jacksonville State in the 20 to one winner, as many Hawkeye batters did, but. Especially Kyle was five for five, five runs scored, five RBIs, a couple of home runs. And a triple. Huck hits it on the ground, foul just past the third base bag. Right, Kyle did about everything in that game. Huck with 18 hits and 59 at bats, 20 RBIs. Five home runs on the season for Huckstorf. Leads the team in RBIs. Well, he's hit some massive home runs, a grand slam, a three run, so gotten his money's worth for the most part. Table gets set pretty nicely for him. 
Buell's 0-1, drifts low, ball one. Moore at first base, short lead. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Pitch to Huck, popped up right side. Right fielder Bushy moving towards the line. Wind is pushing it over into foul territory. It is caught in foul ground to retire Huxdorf. No advancement by Reese Moore. Yeah, that was a tough one for Reese. In some ways, we almost wanted to see him. Uh, it was just hard to tell if it was going to stay fair or foul. And so if it stays fair, you have to be you have to be off the bag and partway there because Huck isn't going to stop right at the base. And so if you know it's going to blow foul, then maybe he could have tagged, tagged up and forced a throw, but it was actually a good throw in anyway. Wynn just couldn't push it out of play. I think it was what most of us were hoping for. Hochstorf is out number one. This is Davis Kopp, Iowa's starting catcher. Hits it on the ground to third. The only play will be over to first base to get Kopp. Moore advances to second base. But you kind of want to see, this isn't a great fielding team. 968 is what Western Mitchell. Illinois fields. And so, you know, there's 16 airs out there. So basically one a game. Mm -hmm. um, kind of want to try to put some pressure. Obviously, that wasn't the uh, the most hardest hit rocket, but um, it did require a throw, which was elevated a bit less than in the bullseye. Right. All right. So Reese Moore in scoring position out there at second for Gable Mitchell. He swings at the first pitch, drives it to right center. Bushy's there. He's got it on the run. And that'll do it for the second. Quick moving game so far, scoreless through two. We're back for the third right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton each offer guest spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. 9-1-2 for the Leathernecks in the third. Brecht returning for another inning of work. He's up to five strikeouts, and he struck out the side in the second. No score between Iowa and Western Illinois. Each team with one hit. This is Jackson Horn, right-handed hitter, starting shortstop for Western. First pitch from Brecht. High and out, ball one. How do you feel about Brody's pitch count, John? We look at that quite a bit. He's at 30 right now. That was... Uh... I mean, at 30, you know, 31 with the first pitch of the inning, it was a much better inning. It was just a 12-pitch inning last time. But, you know, obviously you get ahead. He's behind here 2-0. and oh, But, you know, the idea being go go throw strikes again. Horn hits 088, you know, 13 strikeouts and 34 at-bats. Third of the time. Here's the 2-0. That's in there for a strike, 2-1. and one. Yeah, it was the nine hitter. He's not going to go up there with a with a real big green light until Brody throws the strike to him. So we'll see if he changes his approach a little bit here now with the 2-1 pitch. Here it comes. Ground ball up the middle. Mitchell backhands it. Throw from shallow center. Got him at first base. How about that play? Gable Mitchell, yes. That was pretty darn good contact, really. Gable catches just a small break as that ball hits off the edge of the mound and takes a little bit of bounce toward him. but. 
Boy, to, to stop his momentum, jam the brakes, and, and make a good, strong throw from shallow center field. Well done, Gable Mitchell. And he made it look easy. He, he sort of seemed like he was gliding over to it, but full effort required to make that play, and a good stretch by Blake Guerin to accelerate the process of the ball getting to the glove. One down. Here is Heggie. Brecht skips it to the plate. Ball one. Heggie reached on an error in the first. That's where your 6'6 first baseman with a little stretch helps you out a little bit. Right. Guerin at first. Back in the starting lineup for Iowa to start the weekend. 1-0 pitch from Brody. Outside. Ball two. Yeah, for the first, you know, the first two innings, Brody was winning the the OOs and the and the even the one O count now behind two guys two and O here, misfired there ball three got a little unlucky there that ball's top of the zone but looks pretty good. Again, you've got the umpire trained to not call a strike right now in this inning. Three balls, no strikes. Brody out of the windup, the pitch. There it is, called strike. Low portion of the zone, three and one. I know Brody probably can't see him, but Herky dancing around right behind home plate is probably not the greatest thing for the home pitcher. Yeah. Not sure that that uh, is a great idea. Here's ball four. That might have something to do with it, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with yes, but. First walk of the day issued right by Brecht. And Heggie's got that eye. You know, 12 walks, now 13 on the season to just nine strikeouts. So good bat to ball skills. What you're looking for, for a, from a leadoff standpoint. This is Bushy now, left-handed hitter. Stands straight up when he's in the box. Strike one from Brecht goes with an off speed. Stands straight up. He's got the purple socks on. No stirrups, not like the pitcher Buell. All purple. No balls and a strike. Brecht deals. Swing and a miss. Low outside corner, strike two. Hawkeye's trusting the scouting report, too, as Bushy singled through the 5-6 hole over there, and you really don't see any any different shift. Seeger's still up the middle. and 0-2, oh, check swing, hit on the ground, right side. Guerin will let it go foul before picking it up. Well, a good choice there to not uh, allow that to be a sacrifice bunt. Just took it on the... Took it on the slightly foul range. See if Brody goes with the fastball, hard fastball to get it by him. He's really relied on that splitter today. Ground ball up the middle, Seegers dives, base hit into center. Second hit of the game for Bushy. And that was a well-hit ball. Just stayed with that 93-mile-an-hour pitch. Catcher. Outside Catcher. part of the plate, drove it right back up the middle. You know, and I think that's kind of what you, unless, you, unless you're ahead, you really don't want to try to do anything too crazy with Brody. So you just keep it in the big, big part of the field. Seegers had a little shift on, but couldn't get to that one because it was so well-hit. Couple of ground ball base hits for Western Illinois in today's game. Duran is the batter. Strike one. Dropped it right inside the, the top part of the zone. Just not many fastballs at all from Brody to this point. No, it's been an interesting mix so far. You know, started off the game with a few fastballs, but really been a lot of off speed stuff today. 0 1 delivery. Way outside. Ball one. And generally speaking, he's had pretty good command of it. She's had very good command of it for the most part. Count even at one with one out. Runners at first and second for the Leathernecks. Here's the pitch. Downstairs, ball two. Take a peek at uh, the runner at first base, Bushy, John. He's, when he gets his lead, you know, Blake is not holding him on over there. Way behind the line. Uh, behind the base path, behind the behind the baseline. He's trying to create an angle for yeah. a single to the outfield so he can give himself a better angle to head to third base. Optimistic. Can, can he start, you know, that, that part too, but can he start that far out of the base path? My goodness, you, you see uh, 
when when folks are running from first to second, you know, or in a tag situation or a pickle, something like that, that seems like that's pretty extreme. Like that'd be considered out of the base path. What well, do you he, think? He would be out of the baseline if someone were trying to make a play on him. But I mean, you see, as guys round bases, they get outside of the normal running corridor all the time. He's just kind of starting outside of the normal corridor. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Not at first base, <laughs> not like that. It's a really strange, uh, strange opening opening salvo here. They just, Western Illinois called timeout. Third base coach and the batter took a, took a chat. Be interesting to see what that was all about. Two balls and a strike. We'll see if they've got anything cooking on this pitch. Outside, they'll throw, try a snap throw down to second base. Not quite in time. Good play by Kopp and Mitchell to make it close down there at second. But Heggy is back, and the Hawks had a bit of trouble now with Brecht falling behind three and one. Well, that throw just tailed a little bit toward first base, or a little bit more, a little bit more on the money, and I think they had a chance to tag the runner out. The three-one. Called strike, wow. outer part of the zone, count is full. That was uh, that was beyond even generous for wow. a strike zone. It felt a little bit like uh, some Georgia strike zone. Just a touch there. Full count pitch from Brecht. See if he can come all the way back. The pitch, grounded foul over to the right side. It'll ride the top of the Iowa dugout and fall in. Yeah, boy, if you're... You're Jaron there, you got to fight that off because that ball's still outside, but it's two inches closer than the last one was. So Everything has been outside to right-handed hitters or the outer part of the zone. Nothing inside from Brody today. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. There it was inside. Call the ball. Ball four, and the bases are loaded with one out. Yeah, so a couple of free bases this inning. JR, give one. And this is the uh, this is the spot you put yourself in. Two walks, sandwich a single, and the top three batters in the order are on for Western Illinois. There's one out. We'll have a mound visit from pitching coach Sean McGrath. He fell behind the number nine hitter to lead off the inning as well. He was behind 2-0. Came back and got a really good play from Gable Mitchell on the on the. 2-1 pitch on the ground out up the middle but uh, you know after being just borderline dominant in the first two two uh two innings this third inning has been a bit more of a struggle appearing to be human in the third we don't like that no we don't like <laughs> we we like brody the human but we don't like human brody right as yeah, there, much <laughs> there was there was no need for brody to do that Regrouping now and getting set to deal to J.R. Hevelin, the designated hitter. Brody struck him out back in the first. Corners stay back for Iowa. Raider creeping forward at third. First pitch, swing and a miss. Sharp breaking ball. Fell out of the zone, and Hevelin went after it. Yeah, again, I think that's the splitter. Brecht comes set. Bases loaded and one out. 0-1 pitch. Low and out, Davis does a great job behind the plate to knock it down. Brody's velocity isn't normal today, so it, I wonder what's, uh, if he's pacing himself a little bit more. 1-1, one, one, low ball two. A lot of mid-80s up to mid-90s. Haven't, I don't know, I think 97 is the hardest we've seen. And those are the first two pitches of the game. Yeah, and he has thrown... I mean, showing some variance with the splitter is not, not all bad, but the, the velocity down on the fastball. There's strike two. Up and in with a hard strike from Brecht. Count even at two. You know, that one's 95. That's really the first time he's come inside and worked there. Yeah. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Called third strike. High outside corner. Brody got him. Well, both teams' hitters are going to need to adjust. This strike zone is outside. Um, that Brody didn't get the giant benefit. He got a, a pitcher two before, but you know that ball is outside yeah. the strike zone. Kyrie Alexander. 
Catches the break there. But he's been consistently calling it. Right. We're, we're to the point in the game where that is going to be called a strike the rest of the way. Here's Kyrie Alexander. Strike one from Brody. Yeah, so, you know, to your point earlier, you know, whether it's an angle issue or whatever it is, his view of the home plate certainly uh, allows for a couple inches on the outside part. A one. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. And now he was Batters at need to kind of extend an extra notch on a telescope of a bat, right? <laughs> they do, but can you imagine having to get closer to the plate with Brody pitching? Wouldn't want to do that either. No balls, two strikes, two outs with the bases loaded. The pitch from Brecht. Chopper, left side, tough play. Seegers charging, gloves it. Throw to first, not in time. And Western Illinois, they're on the board first with a run scored in the third. And that's the free bases coming back to bite you. 63 mile an hour off the bat. He swings at a pitch he's only swinging at because the strike zone's moved outside and hits a slow roller. one nothing Western Illinois. Third hit of the game for the Leathernecks off of Brecht. Bases remain loaded. Fresh count for Brock Loomis. Brody deals, swing and a miss. Loomis with a very open stance. He's got a significant bend in his knee and that front left foot pointed right towards Raider Tello. He's got a big golf swing. 0-1 pitch from Brecht. High. Count even at one. Yeah, Loomis, 161. Alexander, though, had just a 196 batting average. Leg that out for a single. Brecht deals the 1-1, swung on and missed. Advantage Brecht now as he looks for a strikeout. Iowa will send Garen Seegers and top of the order Nelson to the plate. We get to the bottom of the third. The Hawkeyes trailing 1-0. Yeah, it was an 0-2 single with Alexander. Swing and a miss on the 1-2. There's out number three. There we go. Minimize the damage there after kind of creating your own problem. Now Hawkeye bats need to get it going. Leathernecks leave the bases loaded. one nothing Western. We're back for the bottom of the third right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oakville is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oakville.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! I'm Ingrid Lizarraga, breast surgeon at the University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center, the state's only NCI-designated cancer center. Here, we look beyond just the type of cancer you have to discover the molecular details of the disease. We have teams dedicated to each cancer type with treatments and trials you won't find anywhere else in Iowa. Go to uihc.org slash cancer. Marking the second highest finish in program history. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM College Sports Radio channels 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio. 2023. Western Illinois out in front, one nothing, getting to the bottom of the third at Banks this afternoon. Series opener with Western Illinois. We'll play two games tomorrow, beginning at 12:05. Iowa sending Blake Guerin to the box first. Iowa with just one hit, not quite a time through the order, but. Uh, not much pressure being put on Western Illinois at time through it against a pitcher that the Iowa staff thought, yeah, really a great opportunity to jump on this guy early. Uh, lots of first pitch swing, and it's not been, you know, against uh, uh, against Jack State, even the first pitch swinging, there was a lot of really good barrel contact. First seven hitters, that 
hasn't been the case here. Blake Guerin takes strike one down the heart of the plate, 83 miles an hour. Blake has, has narrowed his stance a bit, and he doesn't uh, have that open stance as much as he as he used to, maybe last year or the early parts of this year. So he's been working on his swing. We saw him earlier in the season go opposite field, focus on that a little bit more. Yeah, trying to tune his approach. He's having a hard time getting to the outside part of the plate. 1-1, one, one, out in front, and missed it, 1-2. and two. Some with the off-speed stuff. <laughs> yes. Seen a little bit more variety in velocity from Buell. Here's the one-two to Blake. Chopped it foul over to the left. Yeah, and Buell was extremely efficient through the first two innings. See if Io can maybe you know, again see him take a pitch a little bit, you know, try to try to work it a little bit, get going. The left-hander deals to Garen. High above the letters, two and two. Even if it doesn't pay dividends now, maybe it pays dividends in a couple innings as opposed to waiting until the ninth inning. Yeah, I think that's the key with, with taking the pitches. Two twos in the dirt. Count is full for Garen. It's not necessarily about instant success, uh, you know, or instant gratification with with riding the pitch count up or or taking the pitches, but maybe making the, the opposing pitcher think a little bit more. 3-2 to Garen. In the dirt, ball four. That's a great at bat. Fell behind one and two, fouled off a good pitch, just got a piece of it, ends up drawing the walk. Now batting, and, coming and, all the way back. Yeah, and you wonder if that was part of the messaging in between the uh, half inning there to say, hey, let's start taking a few pitches because, you know, you wonder if Coach Sutherland said, hey, you guys are good enough hitters where if you fall behind to two strikes, you'll be fine. Well, his stuff, it, it, it's, again, it's like the pitcher at, at Jack State. It's not overwhelming stuff, so you can. You can battle back or hang around. Seeger squares to bunt, missed it, and it hit the catcher, went all the way through. Got all the way through and hit him right must have in a tough spot. Must have fouled it off because, although maybe he didn't, the umpire didn't call a dead ball, and just the third baseman came in and picked it up. We're going to have a long chat here between the home plate umpire and the third baseman now. Just uh, we'll throw that ball out, find a new ball. I think that may have caught Duran in an unfriendly spot. He's south, kinda, of, south of the border. South of the border. He's kind of doubled over uh, at home plate. Well, I know Michael was trying to push bunt there, but we've talked about it before. You, know, you kind of want to catch the ball with the bat, and that when he just kind of jabbed at it, unfortunately missed. Uh, and super, unfortunately, for Duran that he missed. Need to get Michael going this part of the season. You know that it's in there. You know, and he's, he's flashed moments of it, uh, kind of like all of the Hawkeye hitters for the most part. They've they've shown signs of, yeah, we got this, and then, you know, game or two they disappear, and then they come back, and and that's been the 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 struggle kind of up and down the lineup is consistently consistently putting that that out there. And we, we kind of say all those things, and Michael's still batting 262, not not bad by any means. 0-1 pitch to Seegers, high at the letters. Ooh, called a strike. Wow. 0-2. Now, Hawkeye fans don't have a lot of room to complain. That is in the strike zone. It's higher than what he's called, but based on the, some of the pitches Brody got last inning. Yeah. Which... Visually, it looked high, though, don't you think? I know we've got the, the tracker up here. Downstairs for ball one. Garen at first base after he drew the leadoff walk to start the bottom of the third. Western out in front, one nothing. Iowa with just one hit, a time through the order. Seeger's looking for team hit number two. Pitch inside, two and two. Love to see Michael now, because now he's probably setting you up, so maybe he comes back on the outside part of the plate, maybe tries to throw that backdoor breaking ball. So if you're Michael, Go ahead and poke this thing to right. They've got a pretty good shift on you. Roll it through that right side. Buell's ready. The 2-2. Low and in. Ball three. You know, and again, Buell's a guy that walks a guy an inning. You know, Garen was his first walk. So just continue to make him work. Make him struggle for outs a little bit. Michael choked up on the bat. The 3-2. 
Blooped into right, hooking towards the line. It is down for a base hit and into the corner. Garen chugging around second. He'll get to third base. Mitch Bow puts up both hands. Stop right on that bag, Blake. He'll stay at third. It's a double for Seegers. Right inside the line. And actually, that wasn't the pitch I was looking for Michael to go out there. It was, it was down. It was a little bit inside and just dropped a little golf swing inside out. No Wynn was sad. trying to push it foul, but it held up long enough. Hawks have a chance to get that run right back. Two in scoring position for Iowa. And the top of the order, Andy Nelson coming to the plate. Nelson struck out back in the first. Andy batting 282. 214 with runners in scoring position. He's got two of them out there with nobody out. Nelson very steady in the box. Pitch from Buell. Swing and a miss. Nelson tried to jump on it and he missed it. 84 mile an hour fastball is up and away. Buell's really, I know he came inside a little bit, but he's tended to work that outside early in the count. That's where he's got the soft contact. Left hander deals. Swing and a miss again. Nothing in two. He went back to the change up there and circle change from the left hander spun it outside away from Nelson he's down in the count nothing and two infield playing in for Western Illinois they've got the one nothing lead in the third 0 2 pitch high just below the eyes it's funny every Hawkeye hitter that's moved into the leadoff spot seems like they've just pressed a little bit and struggle to produce especially when they get runners in scoring positions stay focused on process Nelson skies this in the air, down the line and right. Bushy is over, moving towards the line. He will make the grab. Garen trying to tag from third. Here comes the throw. Blake, beat it. Safe at home, we're tied at one. Wheels Garen comes flying <laughs> in. The throw is a pretty decent throw. It was off of the plate toward the Hawkeye dugout. But the good news in any event for the Hawkeyes was that Jaron didn't come up with the ball, so whether he made the tag or not, the ball was laying there on the turf, so it really wouldn't have mattered. Uh, but Hawks could tie the score and have a chance now to take the lead. The guts by Mitch Bow at third. <laughs> One out, Seegers at third. Here's Peterson swinging at the first pitch, drives it deep to left. It is over the left fielder's head and to the wall. Peterson around first. He's at second with an RBI stand-up double. The Hawks have the lead. It's two to one. I get that the wind's blowing in, but why are you playing Sam Peterson that shallow? He didn't even get that one as good as he can get it. Drove it over his head. Great job, actually, from the center fielder there uh, in Palmer to get over there and back it up and not let it get all the way to the wall and keep, keep Petey at second base. Davis really great gave great effort in left. He almost caught up to it as the ball just sort of tailed away from him a bit. 2-1 Iowa in the third. Great response after giving up the first run of today's game in the top half of the inning. Here's Raider Tello swinging at the first pitch and driving it foul over to right. Yeah, we talked about maybe taking some pitches, and it seemed like early in the Early in the inning, they did. Petey jumped on the first pitch. Now Raider Tello tries to jump on the first pitch. Peterson at second base. No balls and a strike. Try pickoff move to second. Peterson was ready for it. He's able to get back without a dive. This hockey coaching staff does a great job with the the pickoff moves and and you know do, doing the scout to give the base runners in it. The, the best opportunity to, to read plays. Oh, one to Tello. Outside and a bit low, count even at one. Ooh. Ooh. All of a sudden we got squeezed. Must have been too low for the home plate umpire. Perhaps. Hello, waving the bat above his head. The 1-1. Punch down the line in right. That will find the Iowa bullpen 1-2. and two. A lot of work down the right field line this game. Wind blowing over there, but uh, Hawkeye hitters really have been pushing a lot of 
Baseball's over there. Raider up over 300, batting average of 304, grounded out to the pitcher his last time up. Takes ball two outside. Reese Moore stands on deck for Iowa. Now, he wouldn't need any assistance getting the ball out to right today. No, he could get the, uh, he could hit a little hook shot over there. Two balls, two strikes. Tello closes his stance a bit, hits this on the ground to short. Horn is there. He'll step, he'll throw. Tello almost beat it out, but he is retired at first base, two down. Yeah, he took his time there with a little extra pump step, and yeah, Raider Tello hustling out of the box. Reese Gave a good effort, almost got there. It'll be up to Reese Moore to try to get it with two outs. This is a little bit of what Iowa ran into in, in Georgia. Yeah, I guess a little bit in Alabama, too. Not having a major inning, right? Not, not having putting up one or two, but nothing really more than that. Not maximizing those yeah. opportunities. You know, second and third, nobody out. Um, you know, you get two, but then you still got a guy at second with one out, and you'd really like to make sure you get him in. Moore is the batter. He takes ball one. Here comes the 1-0 pitch with Peterson still out there at second base. The delivery. There's strike one outside corner. You know, this has been a big inning for Iowa. I mean, obviously on the on from the run perspective, but you know, we were sitting at 19 pitches for Buell before this inning started. So to get up to you know, north of north of 40 and pushing 45 now. Low and out to Moore. We have ball two. Baseball bingo winners. Probably not the best. Come out time. tomorrow afternoon and we'll play again. Best time to announce that. It'll be a bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Two balls and a strike. The delivery to Moore. Hits it high in the air to right, but way out in front of that. And it's foul. Had the distance, didn't it, John? 102 off the bat because he got, got that inside breaking ball. I like how he hung with it. That ball had 22 inches of sweep. He didn't assume it wasn't going to be a strike. So that had to come from his back hip, and he stayed with it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner at second for Iowa. Two to one lead for the Hawks in the third. Pitch to Moore, outside corner. And Reese is down on for strikes. The in the third, two runs, two All right, hits. a couple of runs Warriors come across run for Iowa. The two Hawkeyes three. have the lead. It's two to one. Hawkeyes we'll bring you the fourth two. right after this. Well, this is Iowa one. baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Last weekend, I University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day health care needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, Brody got a little bit of rest sitting in the dugout for an extended period of time after Iowa put up a couple of runs to give the Hawkeyes the first lead of the day. Strike Leading one from Brack to Reese Davis. Left fielder Reese Davis. Again, 7-8-9 here. Just want to see Brody go right after him. 0-1. Fouled into the glove of Cop. Nothing in two. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh... You combine the batting averages, and you barely get over 200 with these three hitters. 0-2, blowing out, ball one. At 0-53, 107, and 086. Oh, well, Are we, you doing the math in your well, mind? Well, because we got a hit there, didn't we? That, uh, or did... 
Grounded foul over to the left. Because I was seeing 56, 111, and 088. So somebody must have. Uh, well, the up, yeah, the updated. Brody's. Yeah, so we're 193, 2, 246 worth. <laughs> Are you doing the mental math, John? I did the mental math. <laughs> the 1 2. Another foul ball hit by Davis. You're much stronger at the math game. <laughs> much fresher with the math than, than I am. It uh, does come up relatively frequently in my day job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big numbers guy, huh? I hit big numbers guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have at least a client or two that hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Brody ready with the one, two. Here it is. Hit in the air, foul over to the right. Good job here so far from Davis to foul off some pretty good pitches that haven't been right in the middle of the plate. They've been kind of around the edges of the zone, and he's went up and stayed in play and knocked them around a little bit. The one-two, swing and a miss. Brody had him reaching for that. That's, That's strikeout number eight for Brett. Center fielder, Grant Palmer to ask Coach McGrath. This was an intentional, uh, I mean, I'm sure it was an intentional decision or, or kind of why the decision to attack this way. I'm, I'm with you. Grant Palmer is the batter. Here's a bunt down the first baseline. Brody will jog over and the ball will just continue to roll. Nobody's picked it up yet. It's foul <laughs> as Garen will walk over and glove it. Yeah, I'm with you, John. I, based on the combination too the, the pitch selection and the positioning because we just have not seen many fastballs from brody today we've seen the cutter and the splitter cutter and the splitter he stayed away primarily uh, yeah but he's had probably some of the better command that i've seen him have of the multiple off-speed pitches a one from brecht swing and a miss palmer went downstairs to get it and missed it and, you know, I equate everything to golf. And so, you know, sometimes it's you're on the driving range and, you, you know, the ball's going a certain direction and you're like, okay, maybe it's not normal, but that's the way we're going to play this round of golf. 0-2, oh, way outside, ball one. So, you know, maybe it's not normal for Brody to play that way, but it's obviously been effective. Eight strikeouts through three and a third. Just a couple of walks for Brecht. The 1-2. Outside, just away, ball two. I mean, you might as well dot it there. That's pretty close to what's been called. Yep. It's a little further out than what's been called, but let's well give it a shot. Count even at two, the pitch on its way home. Chop to the right side. Garen will field and take it to first base himself. Three unassisted. Blake with the help without letting Brecht come any closer to the bag. He gave him the stop sign and then jogged over there to first. That was such weak contact. It didn't even register on track, man. So Third stop, Jackson Horn. Kind of a delayed drag through the zone. Yeah, that's been a majority of the, the balls that have been put in play by Western Illinois today, with the exception of a couple. I mean, Bushy's made decent contact at the top of their order. Yeah, particularly his second hit up the middle was good, solid contact. Nine hitter Jackson Horn stands in. Brecht starts him with an off speed. Those breaking balls, strike one. Let's see how this at bat goes differently, being ahead 0 1 as opposed to being behind 2 0. Yes. Out of the wind up the pitch, outside. Brecht at 76 pitches, a little bit high. A ball and a strike, Brody deals. High ball two. Guess we'll get to 2-1. We'll just do it differently. <laughs> They're in a different fashion. Breck takes a bit of a lap around the mound. Now resets. Two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Outstanding pitch there. Tied him up with a splitter up and in. I liked it inside, right? It's about the fourth or fifth time he's thrown inside today. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, my, inside, ball three. Just a little inside, and, you know, for the, for the extra he's given on the outside corner, he hasn't given that on the inside corner at all. 
Just shifted over a bit to the outside for right-handed hitters. Here comes the full count pitch from Brecht. Lost him. Ball four. And the Leathernecks will have a base runner. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Top of the order for Chris Hagee now. Couldn't quite finish off the inning in 1-2-3 fashion, so Brody will see a fourth hitter in the fourth. Ball one, low. Yeah, and again, I think from a, you know, I guess more importantly from a Hawkeye perspective, is just dragging the inning on. The doubleheader tomorrow is going to tax the bullpen anyway. Right. 2-0 to Hagee now. And well, sitting he struggled a bit the last two innings. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, and sitting north of, uh, you know, north of 80 pitches here, you're going to kind of hope to, at this point, you're just going to hope to get through five. And, and that's one thing that we have discussed, and, and the coaching staff as well sort of put the, the bug in our ear that maybe this, you know, for as much heat as the bullpen has taken, It'd be, it'd be nice if the starters could go a little bit longer, too, than, than what they have been this year. Well, it'd be much better if you ask your bullpen, bullpen for two or three innings instead of four and five innings every, because every game on a weekend, you know, it's one thing if you're asking, you're asking your guys for six innings and instead you ask them for, for 12. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge difference. And, and no matter how deep you are, you're asking at a whole different level at that point. 2-0 delivery is a called strike on the outside corner two and one iowa leading two to one in the top of the fourth i mean you make it basically two games when you go five and four like that your starter gets you five and then your relievers get you four it really doesn't matter hard fastball outside ball three you can tell brecht is getting a little bit irritated now and bushy the guy with two of the three hits on deck so big spot Brody climbs the mound back on the rubber. Here comes the 3-1. Low, ball four, in the dirt. And after quickly getting the first two hitters out, Brecht has walked back-to-back -back batters, and we will see Bush. Right fielder, Liam. Nobody in the Bushy. Iowa bullpen, so all on Brody in the fourth. Two on and two out for the Leathernecks. Bushy two for two today with a couple of singles. Tello can't give a ton of ground at third. First pitch, high and out, ball one. We can see that one come out of his hand. That, was, that wasn't that was going to come anywhere good. Now, Seegers holding the runner on second puts him basically in exactly the spot where Bushy singled last time. one -oh pitch from Brody. High, ball two. We'll have a pitching, uh, a mound visit from Sean McGrath. John, you mentioned Raiders positioning there at, at third. You, you don't want to give him too much. What, what do you mean by that? Well, he can't go He can't go too far into the 5-6 hole because then all of a sudden it just becomes a race to third base if the, guy, if the runner gets a good jump. And, you know, if, if Cop throws an 80-mile-an-hour, 85-mile-an-hour fastball down to third base and you're trying to catch it for Raider Tello running at full speed, uh, it just becomes difficult. You've got to give yourself, you have to play close enough to the bag that you can get there mm -hmm. and be relatively comfortable in, in applying a tag and not have to be on the move. Because then if, if cops throws it all into fair ter foul territory, it's too hard to, it's too hard to make that catch. So, uh, and another know. thing too that, that I think about is the way some of these base hits have been going this season against Iowa and a little bit in this game. I wouldn't put it past Bushy to put one inside the line there at third too. <laughs> Being late, maybe on a pitch from Brecht, although Brody isn't firing it in there at his typical velocity. A little bit of activity in Iowa's bullpen now. Jack Young jogs on down there. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Runners at first and second for Western. Iowa leading it 2-1 to one in the fourth. The pitch dropped in there for a strike. Good way to get back in it, 2-1. and one. An important pitch there. Now you got to stick with this and... Obviously a guy that's had your number so far, so try not to find the middle of the plate. Brex 
Hit into left. Peterson takes a step forward, but it's hit right to him. Sam makes the grab for out number three. A little bit of a longer inning than Brody would have liked, but nothing comes across, and the Hawkeyes get the shutdown inning. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Iowa leading two to one. Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Two to one, Iowa in the bottom of the fourth of the series opener with Western Illinois this evening. Kyle Huxdorf to lead things off for the Hawkeyes. Fly out to right in the second. Daddy for the Hawkeyes. Kyle Huffstorf. Buell at 47 pitches through three. The left-hander deals up and in, ball one to Huckstorf. Brecht on the flip side, upper 80s in his pitch count. So something to keep an eye on. Yeah, 89, mm. so. Huck takes low and in ball two. Maybe, uh, maybe he gets through the fifth inning, but more than likely you're going to need uh, you're going to need 12 outs, probably at a minimum from the Hawkeye bullpen. Let's give him some run support. How about that? Here's a 2-0 to Huck. High strike call, two and one. They would appreciate that. Yes. Build the lead in the fourth. Iowa only up by one. It's been a pitcher's type of day. Huck fouls this off the catcher again. He's taken a beating. He's he's an OVC player of the week, but man, he's really he's really battling back there. That caught him on the inside of the leg. Two and two. Wind is now blowing out to right. It was blowing over to right earlier. Now it's blowing out to right. A little bit of a difference there. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Huckstorf. Fouled off over to the right side. That could benefit Iowa. I mean, again, as we talked about, uh, Iowa has more power overall than uh, than the Leathernecks do. 12 home runs for Western Illinois, 19 for Iowa. 2-2. Two -two. Huck chops it foul past Coach Bo down the line at third. You know, a lot. It, was... it doubles 35 to 21 and, and triple. So, I mean, there's more extra base pop there. And uh, obviously you'd think the ability for some of these Iowa hitters to elevate the ball that way is a little bit higher. And we've seen some opposite field power from Raider Tello, Davis Kopp from the right-handed side. Kyle can certainly take one over there. Here comes the 2-2. Chopper up the middle. Shortstop Horn has got it. He'll throw it to first. Close play. Got him. Huck was speeding down the line, but... Horn makes a good play at short. He didn't wait as much as he did when Raider was thrown out. No, but he, he had to wait on the hop a little bit rather than coming in and taking it. He took a chance by waiting for that hop to get to him and nearly paid for it. And again, I just, I'd like to see that that ball was off the plate again, but close to the strike zone that this umpire has been calling. But I'd like to see the hitters adjust and try to go opposite field a little bit. Ball one to Davis Kopp. If, you're just gonna, if you try to pull that ball, you're just going to pound it in the turf like that. Downstairs, ball two. We're seeing Buell miss the zone a bit more the last couple of innings. So it, it's 
it's in that transition period of the game, it, it feels like, where Iowa goes from aggressive to being patient and then have to jump on it when they see it. Here's Cop driving one to left, base hit in between third and short. Cop has Iowa's fourth hit of the day. That was the hardest hit ball for Iowa so far. 103 off the bat. Uh, found, a, found a good hole there as he didn't get it elevated, which going that direction was probably a good thing. Although I'm not the wind's not hurting you to left like it was earlier in the game. Good point, so. John. Good observation. You, know, you, you take one to left, it, it maybe move it over to the right side of the scoreboard, but I don't think it's keeping it in as, as strong as you're saying. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. Strike one to Gable Mitchell, who flied out to right his first time up back in the second. Two to one, Iowa in the fourth. Cop the runner at first. Wouldn't expect too many games to be played with Davis over there. Mitchell batting from the right side. The lefty deals high, ball one. No, I wouldn't argue to see a push bunt, though, from Gable. Of, you know, if he's comfortable doing it, just try to get it past the pitcher, although left-handed pitcher a little bit more. Uh, appealing to field it and throw it to second. 1-1 one, one to Gable. Got his hand started, but held off. Good job there, ball two. I've been impressed with Mitchell this year. His average is 235. On base percentage, though, is 414. He's drawn 16 walks. He's really got a good, a good idea of where the zone is. Protects well. Two balls and a strike. The pitch from Buell. That's a strike inside corner, two and two. He's he's sort of like a Michael Seegers 2.0. What do you think about that, John? I'd I'd, uh, I'd buy into that comparison. Count even at two now, though. Third baseman Alexander playing pretty close to the bag. Some room on the left side, ton of room on the right side for Gable if he can push one over there. Sliced it foul instead over to the right. And it's. Yeah, Buell, so hard to tell what the pitches are. Is there, it's such little variation. That one was 81 miles an hour, but it was up in the zone. It kind of just shows even at 81, it's hard to get your barrel all the way up there. 2-2. Two -two. Line drive over the first baseman's head. Fair ball into right. Cop moving to third. Mitchell will slide into second base. A double for Gable. His fourth of the season, two in scoring position now for Blake Guerin. Again, just he took a pitch middle of the plate, didn't try to do anything with it other than just serve it over into right. Funny how that works, John. Michael Seegers did exactly the same thing, and we'll get our first mound visit from Western Illinois. And Blake Guerin coming to the plate. Guerin walked and scored in the third. You know, you wonder when it when it comes to maybe some slower pitches coming in, mid 80s, upper 70s. It's almost like some of the hitters have uh, too much time to think about whether or not to swing at it. Well, your brain tells you, I can turn on this pitch and drive it, and I mean logically, yeah, you can. But Buell's done a nice job locating. He's mixed the pitches both, you know, up and down. He's been inside and outside, so he's done a good job that way. And so, you kind of have to decide what your approach is going to be, and through now three and a third innings I've seen enough of trying to pull it <laughs> yes because we're you know it, it's it's again it's it's like the Jack State game where you know what it was at 15 16 ground outs um, you know so somewhere you just kind of want to change it and say hey look I'm just going to serve them into right because you know if I elevate it I've got wind blowing out to the right so it's not like I can't hit a home run to the right if I hit one hard uh, or but if I miss hit one you know, that's, that was 73 miles an hour off the bat for Gable. It wasn't, it wasn't the best hit ball he's hit all year, but it was perfectly placed and, and allowed him to get out and run. Infield comes in for Guerin. Runners at second base and third base. One out. Outfield. Pretty deep, with the exception of the left fielder. Pretty much straight up out there. Garen takes high, ball one. This is a maturity spot for Blake. Uh, basically to the conversation point that you've been bringing up. You, you want to try to pull it, but that could get you into trouble and not be a productive out, or you, know, you get yourself out. Just find a way to get these runners in. Swing and a miss, chasing the pitch low and out. 
or you can bloop one to right, push one through the right side. Doesn't have to look pretty in the scorebook. It all goes down the same. Right. You know, I'm sure Blake would would love to take his uh, to take his RBIs from six to eight here with just a single to right center. One one, high ball two. And he had a great at bat the first time. Fell behind one and two. Uh, you know, fouled off some pitches. Didn't look great in the first three, and and then hung around and and drew the walk. So to see him settle into an approach here. Downstairs, ball three. Hasn't seen too much to hit, though. No, because even the one he swung at was not one to hit. Yeah, <laughs> could have been ball four for, for Blake there. He's looking square in the face at another walk. We'll see if Buell deals a strike to him. Three balls and a strike with one out. Pitcher comes set. Infield stays in. The pitch. Low and in, ball four. And you know that might have been a little bit of a an uh, unintentional, intentional walk, intentional, unintentional walk. Yeah, I guess is the way you want to say that. Just you know, now you've got a force everywhere. Um, you know, just if you're looking at frames, you're going to go, okay, Michael Seeger's in the box, isn't going to hit it as hard as Blake Aaron. Might not be entirely accurate, but that's the the, the way you're going to look at that. But mo more importantly, you're going to set up the double play options now, mm -hmm. force at every base. Middle infield moves back. Corners remain in for Western Illinois. 2-1 Iowa in the bottom of the fourth. First pitch to Seegers, lined into center. Center fielder moving back. Palmer still going back, makes an over-the-head catch for out number two, but Kopp will tag and score from third. Mitchell from second to third. 3-1 Iowa on the Seegers sack fly. I don't think Palmer saw that right away off the bat. He kind of sat there and was a little slow to react, and then by the time he started to move, it was like, uh oh, I got to go, and just barely ended up making a uh, kind of a running grab over the shoulder. But boy, that had a that had a, a chance. This is one of those situations, you know. Iowa had the bases loaded with one out. Boy, it'd be a real shame if the Hawks only get one out of that. So Andy Nelson with an opportunity with two outs, runners at the corners, three to one lead. Pitch to Nelson, fouled it off over to the right. You know, Andy drew, drove in the run with the sacrifice fly back in the third, but uh, you know, be nice. Hasn't had the the greatest two at bats here in his in his first stint in the leadoff spot. Karen at first, Mitchell at third, strike two to Nelson. And that, if you're going to turn on one, that would probably be a pitch to to attempt to, to turn on with it being inside, but you can almost pull it too far if you don't time it up the right way. Right, it's, that's a hard pitch to keep fair, and that's what makes it such a good pitch. 0-2 oh, to Nelson. Buell's ready. Oh, they've got Garen in a pickle between first and second. Hang out there, Blake. Don't get tagged out yet. He does before Mitchell can score. And that is how the fourth inning will end. Garen caught in between first and second. Great job, Logan. Three to one, Iowa with the lead. We're back for the fifth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Get set, go! At the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork, and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. 
I feel a little bit greedy, John, that, that I don't, I don't feel great about the Hawks only scoring great one job, in that inning. Had a big opportunity there. No, a big opportunity, and, and you know, you kind of wanted to, to see Andy Nelson get a swing there. I don't think that was... Uh, I don't think that was a first and third game they were playing there to try to hey we'll we'll just we'll steal a run to, and trade the out for it because um, Blake's probably not the guy you're going to try to depend on keeping a a rundown yeah, alive well, long enough yeah. for that. And That's what we were trying to say. Don't get don't get tagged out yet. But Mitchell couldn't get down the line uh, in time, so the threat ends in the fourth. Three to one Iowa. Top five. Three, four, five for Western Illinois. Brody Brecht out for the fifth. Here's the first pitch of the inning. Lined into center. Huxdorf moving over. Kyle still running, and it's down and by him all the way to the wall. Duran has a leadoff double. Beat the shift in the outfield. Yeah, didn't uh, didn't think that he would pull him, and actually didn't really pull him. Just hit it right up the middle and hit it hard and got he it is. in the air, which doesn't happen yeah. a ton against Brody. Yeah. Um, that time sure did and Kyle thought he could make the play at it and didn't really didn't take an angle back didn't cost him by by taking a sharp angle at it but couldn't make the catch alignment stays the same with Huck to the right of the black Tiger Hawk in center field leadoff double for the Leathernecks Brody deals inside ball one just have and I mean I, I suppose we're fixating on it at this point but where are the fastballs from Brody? We're seeing mid to low 90s, a lot of the splitter and the cutter. Brody's 1-0 pitch, low and out, ball two. Great we just stuff. have not seen the upper 90s. I'm sorry, John, go ahead. No, 100%, you're right. I was just going to say nice stop there from Cop to keep that close enough and in front of him to keep the runner at second. But, yeah, it's, you know, whatever the whatever the issue is, the 90 97 doesn't seem to be in the in the toolbox right now so it doesn't matter just battle and compete and get outs 2-0 is high ball three mm, mm, mm. didn't get any help there oh that's that's 94 should be right at the top of the zone but again uh umpire cordal hasn't really called that pitch today 3-0 up and in ball four four pitch walk hmm and so first and second for the Leathernecks Third in the baseman, fifth. Kyrie Alexander. With nobody out. Here's Kyrie Alexander. He singled in a run in the third. At the infield chopper. We'll see. Maybe he could uh, he could maybe lie, lay down a bunt here. Corners come in for Iowa. First pitch strike from Brecht. A little surprised by that, really, because again, it's you know, typically Brody's really, really difficult to bunt, but he hasn't even been throwing the big sweeping slider mm -hmm. either. So, um, a little bit more buntable today. A oh, one pitch, low and out. Jack Young's probably the the hottest guy in the Hawkeye bullpen right now, as far as coming in to put out a, any potential fire of yep. Brody. Has his shoes. Jack's been nice out of the bullpen for Iowa to this point. 1-1 one, one from Brecht. High outside corner, strike number two. If you lower it down enough, you can get, he'll give you off the plate. You raise it up high, he won't even give you the plate. You're right. But again, that's... If we, if we had to put a fence around the uh, strike zone today, it'd be, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Check swing, good pitch from Breck, but low and out, ball two. Well, you're getting the bottom two and a half, two and a half squares of the uh, of the tic-tac-toe board, and you're getting another half to three-quarter square on the outside part of the plate as long as you stay in that lower end of it. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. The pitch, outside, ball three. Full count. Wow, this feels like a big pitch all of a sudden. Iowa up three to one in the fifth, but Western Illinois threatening already in the inning. Full count pitch from Brecht. Here it is. Low. This is just, it's been a 
just to you know Brody's made it as far as he has today just from a pure from a pure competitor standpoint is you know he's sitting at 100 pitches now through you know four plus innings and that'll do it for him today as coach Heller comes out of the dugout bases loaded and nobody out for Western Illinois in the fifth the door opens down the right field line coach Heller is out he will go grab Brody and that'll do it for Breck today mm. Three to one, Iowa. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game, family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Oh, oh coming through! Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Tight game in Iowa City, top of the fifth. Western Illinois threatening with the bases loaded. Nobody out. Brody Brecht is out of the game. The Hawkeyes turn to the bullpen and bring in right-handed senior from LeClaire, Iowa, Jack Young. 1-0 on the season, seven appearances, five and a third innings, three hits, one run. It was unearned on Tuesday night. Three walks, seven strikeouts. Opponents hitting Jack at just a 158 batting average. He's got the fastball coming in around 90. Sinker, cutter, changeup, slider. All of them with really good movement from that kind of three-quarter, two-thirds slot there down low on the right side, particularly to right-handers. With a three-to-one lead, John, you you bring the corners only in, you bring the whole infield in. What do you think defensively? What is Mitch Bowe thinking about in the dugout? I think you probably bring the corners in. Uh, you know, with Brody, you, you, you might have brought everybody in just because it tended to be more weak contact. Uh, not that Jack gives up a ton of incredibly hard hit balls but you know you go ahead and trade you trade the run for two outs in the middle and get him that much closer and if you get something on the edges then you go ahead and take the out of the plate all right you got to be a tough pitcher to come in like jack young has the last few outings hasn't really started with a clean inning he's been thrown into the fire uh, this one is about as dangerous as it can be. Up three to one, but bases loaded, nobody out. Bottom portion of the order, this is Brock Loomis, 0 for 2 today with a couple of strikeouts. Yeah, you've got guys at the bottom of this order that are willing to strike out. Mm -hmm. Help them. Help them, guide them. Open stance for Loomis, waving the bat above his head. First pitch from Young, outside corner, strike one. And this umpire strike zone tends to be, should really favor Jack's pitch shape. Yes, all the way across the zone. A one. Too far outside that time. Count even at one. So we go back to the defensive alignment, John. What do we see? Blake at first base. He's even with the bag. Raiders playing behind the bag at third, and middle infielders playing at double play depth. Yeah, Hawks taking two anywhere, really. One ball, one strike. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Try it back pick to first base. Not in time. And Blake did a good job to turn his head back to the field of play to make sure that the runner from third wasn't coming home. Yeah, you can't really, you couldn't dawdle there. You had to, couldn't ask the umpire if he got it right or anything else. Yeah. You had to pay attention to what you're doing. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. The pitch from Young. Just low. Outstanding pitch, though, from Jack there. Might throw it again if he can bring it up a little bit more. Two balls, two strikes. Young ready, the pitch. Just outside there, ball three. All right. Pressure pitch coming for Jack Young. 
He'll go off the back of the mound and regroup. Now climb back to the rubber. Gets in position, ready with the 3-2. Here it comes from Young. Popped up, shallow right. Nelson underneath it, still looking up. He's got it. And no tag by the runner at third base. Good throw from Andy Nelson, one down. It's a great pitch from Jack. Didn't completely give in on the 3-2 pitch, but didn't uh, didn't just send it slinging across the middle and allowed it to uh, push it well, far enough out there. And Reese even with the wind Davis. blowing, didn't uh, didn't blow it deep enough to cause too big of a problem. One out. This is Davis, another right-handed hitter. Davis has decided to put batting gloves on now for this at bat. Didn't have him on in either of his first two at bats. Young ready deals. Strike one. Good start. Mid 80s. That's surprisingly observant for you. <laughs> for me, John. <laughs> I'm always looking at the batting gloves. All right. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. You're always good with like the highlighter bat and things. I just didn't realize you were on to batting gloves, too. I knew there was somebody down here that uh, didn't wear them. And Davis is 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. So maybe he's making the mid game switch. I can't say as I blame him. One ball, one strike. One out. Everybody back on the infield now for Iowa. Even Garen over at first base. The 1-1. One, one. Check swing. Didn't go. Didn't matter. Called strike. Outside corner. One and two. Attack, Jack. Attack. Go for it. Young comes set. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Ground ball. Left side. Seegers. Backhand stop. Throw to second for one. On to first. Double play. How about that? Jack Young. You bet. He gets out of the jam in a great 6-4-3 double play. What an outstanding play from Michael Seegers there. Went into the backhand hole, picked it up, threw a seed over to Mitchell, who fantastic turn, and then Jack Young just pumped up leaving the mound. What a, what a job there from the relief corps. Nothing doing for Western Illinois. Three to one, the Hawks with the lead and some added momentum for the bottom of the fifth. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Today's game is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Much like that 6-4-3 double play. A beauty by the Hawkeye middle infielders. It all started with a great pitch from Jack Young. What a nice job by Young out of the bullpen. He came in with the bases loaded, nobody out. And he gets, a, he gets a fly out to right, to shallow right, where no runner can tag and score. And then the 6-4-3. Tough play for Seegers because he was moving back towards the bag at second, had to go all the way over to backhand stop it, quick throw to Mitchell at second, over to Garrett at first. Yeah, that was not, that was not an automatic double play, but boy, Again, just a testament to how good Jack Young's been. Just two of the 14 runners he's inherited. So, you know, Hawkeyes have a couple guys. Jack Whitlock's been really good at that. Jack Young now has taken uh, taken on that role and embraced it too. So maybe it's just something to do with it. Turn in the Jack. There you go. Yeah, that needs to be in the that needs to be in the game notes next week. Something to do with the Jacks in the bullpen for Iowa. They're starting to turn the corner. It feels like this Iowa pitching staff doing the same, especially out of the bullpen, as Andy Nelson 
will get another try to lead off the, the fifth inning. He was in the box in the fourth when Garen was caught in a pickle. 1-1 one, one pitch. Nelson swings and misses 1-2. and two. Just doesn't seem like Andy's seen it too well today. He struck out back in the first. Did have a sacrifice fly in the third. Well, it sounded like it pained you. Yeah, I <laughs> feel for Andy. He's getting some good cuts. There's a 1-2 that is just low. Count even at 2. Boy, you had to see that one well to take that pitch. That's a... <laughs> That, that didn't miss by a ton. It was down low, but good pitch. 2-2. Two, two. Andy fouls it just to our right and over our heads. Bad boy John was so ready to make a play off the screen there. He was up and out of the chair. He got a good jump, just didn't hit the screen. 2-2 two, two from Buell. Off the end of the bat, foul by Nelson. Bucks kind of need to add a few here and at the very least run up a pitch count here as Buell gets closer to 80 now. 2-2. Two, two. Low. Ball three. Good discipline from Nelson. Yeah, the Hawks have the momentum after that defensive play. Yeah, just the whole inning. You know, bases loaded, nobody out. And for Western to come up with none. 3-2. Way outside. Ball four. Good at bat, Andy Nelson. Take back all those bad things you said. Ah. <laughs> I just sensed that he wasn't being as he wasn't being rewarded as I well, felt that he deserved. <laughs> I, I would agree with that. He had been uh, good cuts, but just coming up empty. Like I said, we hadn't been uh, ha haven't seen the Hawkeye hitters that have been uh, good lower in the lineup. As soon as they get into that one spot, have, have struggled a little bit. So. See what the and, and now it would big benefit having his speed on the base paths. Although the left-hander Buell will be looking right at him, but uh, and you you don't sense that Petey's going to bunt. You don't want to do that to him. I don't think that would shock me. Yeah. Uh, if if Petey bunts, he's bunting for a hit, and he's made a decision to do it on his own. Or I'm, not that he wouldn't have gotten that that signal also. But my guess is that Peterson has a lot of. Uh, latitude and trust from the coaching staff and how to how to approach his at bats Peterson is the batter Nelson at first base Sam swings at the first pitch and fouled it back and to that point I was just gonna look I think he swung at the first pitch every time ultimate green light for Sam yeah back in the first inning flight out to center on the OO pitch and back in the third he doubled on the first pitch so this will be the first time he's seen two pitches in an at bat on base streak up to 28 for sam after the rbi double in the third seems good dating back to last year obviously only played this is game 17. reese moore upped his as well and he's in the hole no balls and a strike to Peterson. The pitch, high, ball one. They've thrown a couple of pickoff moves over to first base to keep Andy around the bag. What do you say we test it, John? You kind of wonder if the lefty has a better move. Both of those were kind of slow. 1-1, one, one, hit Petey, ouch. That's really one of Buell's first non-competitive pitches. He's been just right on top of the zone. You know, hasn't bounced balls back to the screen. Catcher hasn't had to work. Catcher's taken a beating, but not because of not because of having to block a bunch of pitches. Yeah. It's a, you know a couple foul balls and things. So really big spot here for Iowa. Uh, you know nobody out. Runners on first and second. You know. Iowa already in their bullpen. You know you want to even it up and get into the Western bullpen now. Seem like they're trying to accelerate the process of their reliever getting warmed up in the in the bullpen. Raider Tello in the box. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. The pitch to Tello. Downstairs. That skipped. Ball one. Yeah, Buell's losing it, isn't he? Seems to be. A walk and a hit batter. I don't want to fully claim that then because bad juju. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to be a little careful. 3-1 Iowa in the fifth. 
Tello takes upstairs, ball two. Yeah, much like the Iowa alignment in this situation, you've got the you got the first baseman Loomis playing inside the baseline. Third baseman still behind the bag in Alexander. Hitters count for Tello, 2-0. Outside, ball three. So he so Buell's missed low, he's missed high, he's missed outside. Look out, Raider. Don't want to miss an inside. <laughs> Well, maybe that was the pitch before when he hit Peterson, so maybe mm -hmm. maybe Raiders safe from that one. That's the sequence. I would expect a, a red light here for Raider. Three and zero. Oh. The pitch inside ball four. Do damage. I know. On one hand, you'd probably like to see the lefty lefty matchup if you're Western Illinois. On the other hand. Your pitcher hasn't thrown a ton of strikes this inning, and he's got nowhere to put a base runner. Right. Designated hitter. Haven't seen a move out of the out of the uh, dugout over to the left yet. I don't think we're going to see one, John. I think they're going to stick with Buell against Reese Moore, who with one swing of the bat could really break this one open. Bases loaded, nobody out. Infield comes in for Western Illinois. The left-hander deals. Moore swings and misses. Swinging out of his shoes for it. If you're going to swing after a pitcher's had a hard time swinging, don't get cheated. Or yeah. throwing strikes, don't get cheated. And Reese certainly did not get cheated there. Moore from the left side. Here's the 0-1 in the dirt. Blocked by Duran. The interesting thing with this alignment is Raider Tello can't wander too far off first base because with them playing in, the first baseman's actually kind of in a modified position there. So with the left-hander, he could shoot one over there if Raider fell asleep. 1-1, one, one, low and out, ball two. Yeah, I'm thinking of a couple of things, too. The, the back pick, is that what you're talking about, or are you talking about the pickoff I'm from the pitcher? I'm talking about the pitcher okay. being able to throw that down there. But, yeah, to your point, too, the catcher's – Hasn't thrown, but he's shown a, hey, I'd like to. Well, on a line drive right to the first baseman would be trouble in terms of getting doubled off. Two balls and a strike. The pitch to Moore. Fouled back to the pad. He was trying to time up the breaking ball. Came in at 75 miles an hour. Yeah, there's the velocity is really dipped now at this point for, for Buell. And so you just trying to do some trying to do some damage here. So just see it. Doesn't have you know, the breaking ball is not going too much anymore. So just follow along, see it out of the hand. Two balls, two strikes. Low, outside two, ball three. I, mean, I have to believe this is Buell's last hitter. They're going to wait as when Huckstor flips around. They've got a right-hander that looks warm now. Full count pitch to Moore. Pause from Buell. The pitch. Ripped foul down the right field line. Saw Reese do that in his last at bat, too. Buell does a good job working the inside part of the plate against the left hander. Even though Reese is really right on the plate, Buell's not afraid to go in there. And it's really hard for Reese then to keep that ball fair. Full count. Another one. Here it is. In the air to the left. Shallow left. Davis sprinting forward. Still running. Still running. Lost his cap. Runner will try to tag from third. Here comes the throw. It'll be cut off. And a sacrifice fly as Andy Nelson scores. It is four to one Hawks. Didn't get all of it, but it's at least a productive, productive at bat to score the run. To your point earlier on getting a little greedy, you, you want more. Kyle. Huckstar. But you take the first one and realize that Western Illinois didn't get any out of their situation when they had the bases loaded. The last time Iowa had three sacrifice flies in a game? 2007. Wow. Well, we're at that. Oh, no, sorry. That was one player had three. Whew. Even more impressive. Huxdorf drives this to left, carrying well, and it'll move the left fielder back. One hop off the wall. One run is in. That's Peterson. It's an RBI double for Huxdorf, jumping on the first pitch. 5 1 Hawks. 104 off the bat for Hawk, and I can't believe they left Buell in to face Hawk.
paid the price for it there. Again, well, the the coaches for Western Illinois are, are leaning forward, looking down the line and left. Uh, they have a pitcher down there, and he's quit throwing as if he's expecting to come in or be ready to go. But I'm not sure what the delay is, and they're still, for the time being, going to stick with Buell. Well, your other alternative here is you now kind of concede this game almost and decide Buell's going to be your yeah, and well, fin they, finish they, that they thought, come out and yeah. get him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like this could be it for Buell as mound visit taking place. Pitcher, made, pitcher walking toward the gate. That would that uh, combination of events would lead us to believe the pitching change is coming and they will make the change. 5-1 Iowa in the bottom of the fifth. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The big game. Family, friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Yeah. Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Western Illinois makes their first pitching change of the day in the bottom of the fifth inning. Iowa leading 5-1. to one. The Leathernecks will turn to right-handed junior Mason Telford. Telford's 0-1 on the season in his seven appearances. A 6.48 ERA, eight and a third innings, ten hits, six runs have all been earned, seven walks, six strikeouts, giving up five doubles and opponents hitting 294 against him. He's watching his warm-up tosses. Looks like the fastball there is kind of in the mid-80s. He's got a breaking ball in the mid-70s. As you can tell by the stats, doesn't dominate the zone exactly. You know, with the seven walks, has more walks than strikeouts. So uh, not an ideal statistic for a pitcher, but has the uh, third lowest ERA on the Leatherneck staff. There's one one pitcher for Western Illinois that uh, that really stands out. He, he's a reliever, a closer type of pitcher. Uh, Caden Kratz, he's got uh, the lowest ERA on the team, .63, but he's got four saves. And with this game on the brink maybe of getting out of hand, they probably didn't think it was a good time to use him, but I suspect we'll see him at some point throughout the series. No, I don't think Iowa wants to. I Iowa doesn't want to be down a run and face him. Now, he's given up seven doubles in his 12 hits, so he, he's not the uh, the typical you know, unhittable closer. But Iowa seeing a right-hander now in Telford. Runners at second and third with one out. Cop stands in. Right-handed hitter. Infield in for Western Illinois. 1-0 pitch. Low and out, ball two. Again, another one of those where maybe you feel you have a base open, so you pitch pitch carefully to Cobb. Look for Davis to jump on this one. 2-0. Low and in, ball three. Didn't give him anything to hit. No, stayed with the off speed. Missed, missed well down and in. Red light, you think? More than likely. 3-0. Breaking ball, high and in, ball four. Didn't get any help on that one. Bases reloaded for Gable Mitchell. No, he might have, uh, Telford might have paid the price. For Buell win. starting to miss the strike Gable zone there a little Mitchell. bit because that ball was a pretty good pitch. See if Gable can switch to the left-handed batter's box and do some damage down that right field line. Bases loaded and one out. Gable swings at the first pitch, fouls it to the Iowa dugout. 
I don't know if I love that after a guy just walked on. I mean, the flip side is maybe he's going to throw a, a soft pitch in the zone and you can you can jump on it. But that was a breaking ball and right on the inside part of the plate. A one. Mitchell shoots it into left field. Base hit. Tello will score. They're going to wave another run. Here comes Huck around third. The throw is up the line at third base. Two RBI single. Gable Mitchell. And it's seven to one. Yeah, that's a good scouting report there because that is a very throwable ball. But clearly the Hawkeye, Hawkeyes and, and third base coach Mitch Bow don't have a lot of uh, uh, don't have a lot of confidence in left fielder Reese Davis's arm, and they're testing him. You saw that throw kind of come out of his hand, and he threw a little bit of a screwball into the cutoff, man. Kellen Strohmeyer will get an opportunity here to the, uh, the left-hander's gone. In for Strohmeyer. Uh, in at Blake Guerin's spot. So you suspect Kellen goes to right, and he comes in to play first? Maybe. Uh, you might see Ben Wilmus come in to play defensively as well, but certainly Kellen could play out there. Strohmeyer, tall left-handed hitter. First pitch, outside corner, strike one. Hopefully Kellen's been watching the game, knows that's <laughs> that's been a strike. But if he tries, he, he's really kind of a hard pull hitter. If he tries to pull that, nothing good's going to happen. Strohmeyer feels like a, on the brink of a breakthrough. 0-1 pitch. Same spot, same result. Nothing and two. Strohmeyer, a redshirt freshman from Dubuque. No balls, two strikes with one out. Runners at first and second. The pitch is low to Strohmeyer. Good take there. He saw it well. See if he can keep battling here and even up the count a little bit. Telford is ready. Here's the right-hander's pitch. Foul back to the net. We'll do it again. Nice job there. 74 mile an hour breaking ball. Strohmeyer stayed on it. Had it timed up well. Just on the top of the barrel and missed it just a bit. That outside corner, Kellen. Here's the one-two. Hit in the air down the left field line. Foul. Yeah, you feel like with the runners in scoring position here that Telford's just going to keep trying to nibble on that outside part of the plate. And again, with the way the home plate umpire has been calling the game, it's a great tactic. One, two. In the air to right center field. In the gap, it is caught on the run. Have to hustle back to second base as Cop gets there. Good connection by Strohmeyer, but... Caught by Palmer. Yeah, did a nice job. Again, that pitch right on the outside part of the plate. 103 off the bat. Cop, I don't think realized there was only one out. <laughs> Is that what it was? I saw him running back. I thought, whoo, he thought that was getting down, but you might be right, John. <laughs> yeah, because there was there was no part of that that thought it was getting down if you were watching where the center fielder had him played. Here comes Michael Seegers. He swings at the first pitch in the air to center again. That just will not carry out of here today. Palmer makes the catch on back-to-back -back pitches. Iowa scores four. It's seven to one. We'll head to the sixth after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox home comfort specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. For City High, while pitcher Marcus Morgan played for Iowa City West. 
Thanks for playing, Hawkeye. John Evans and John Leo in the broadcast we'll booth at Dwayne Banks Field. Top of Iowa the baseball. sixth inning. Iowa Two 7, out. Western this Illinois. One. We mentioned Kellen Strohmeyer entered the game to bat in the fifth. He'll stay in the game out in right field. Andy Nelson comes in from right. He'll play first. Blake Guerin out of the game for the Hawkeyes. New pitcher into the game for Iowa. Uh, the Hawkeyes turning to right-handed junior from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Let's see Chaz Wheatley and what he can provide out of the Iowa bullpen today. Six appearances on the season, a 771 ERA, four and two-thirds innings, four hits, four runs have all been earned, three walks, two strikeouts, opponents hitting 267 against Chaz. Fastball's 90-ish, slider, sweeper, kind of the usual pitch mix. Saw Chaz come in the game early against Georgia. Did a fair job. For Chaz, you see a lot of potential with Chaz. Go ahead, Chaz. 100%. For Chaz, it's, it's really, you know, controlling the... Uh, Leading off. Well, <laughs> controlling the pitch, you know, he, he's when he's on, he's he's sharp, and boy, does the ball go. And he's really, he's had one bad outing this year. St. Thomas got him for three runs in a third of an inning. He wasn't too bad against Georgia. He did give up a run in two thirds of an inning, but otherwise, he has four scoreless appearances. So, uh, it was just strikes, just low on the first pitch from Wheatley to Grant Palmer. This is the eight hitter. Right-hander on right-hander matchup. Wheatley out of the windup. 1-0. Fouled off a cop's ankle. Ouch, Davis. He punches the turf right below him. Got the inside of his foot. And he'll lift his mask up like a welder's mask and take a walk around. Ouch. Catchers have taken a beating in this game. No kidding. And it's still pretty chilly out for baseball standards not that that makes it feel any worse or better but uh, oh it seems to make it feel worse <laughs> <laughs> one ball one strike Wheatley ready the pitch good spot just low ball two well, we do not like the low part of no. the zone we're willing to give you the outside part but we do not stretch it low at all I like that spot, though, from Chaz. The, the hitters aren't going after it, though. Got to bring it up a, just a touch. There it is, two and two, swing and a miss. Well, and that's the, you know, we talked about this in pregame and talked about it with some of the uh, some of the players. As it, when you're facing a team that hits 212, there's a lot of swing and miss. Yep. And so be in the zone. Go ahead and go get it. Misfiring outside. You, know, you just don't want to you, know, you got eight nine one here you don't want to you don't want to give free bases here at the bottom of the order full count pitch from wheatley called third strike got him on the outside the corner low we got the low call there john out number one well so the key is to move it to the outside part of the plate i mean and that was up a little bit uh, jackson again off the off the plate but again, we've had a very consistent zone it's mm -hmm. it's been there uh, it's been there for both pitchers. Good start to the inning for Chaz. Now he'll work on Jackson Horn. First pitch, strike one. I like what I'm seeing from Chaz right now. Oh, he's getting after the zone. Again, for Chaz, just like we talked about with Brody at the open, you know, it's it's turning those into, you know, instead of six pitches, turn it into four. Yep. Just inside, ball one. Yeah, and you may, may wonder why we didn't see Jack Young come back out again. You know, with the doubleheader tomorrow, you may be able to get Jack back in the game tomorrow now by not using him another inning. That's right. Breaking ball called a strike on the outside corner from Wheatley. One and two. Yeah, I like where you're thinking with that. Uh, you, know, you just don't really suspect that Jack goes multiple innings, but in that regard... 1-2 is chopped to Tello at third. His first action today. Raider throws it across the diamond. Strong throw to first base, and he needed to do that because there was some speed down the line on the slow roller. Two down. We had to wait on the hop. He thought about charging it. It was going to be a weird short hop. Decided he had time, but then he, he gets his feet set. He gets organized and into position to make the throw before he makes the catch, and 
does a great job by throwing it across the diamond to get the out. Top of the order. This is Hagee. First pitch strike from Chaz. That's been a key, the first pitch strike on back-to-back -back batters now. Well, we have not got Hagee out today. Mm -hmm. Hawks have E6 and a couple of walks, so. Wheatley seems to be up for the challenge. The 0-1. Breaking ball. Looked good, but just inside. 1-1. One and one. Well, if you can get Wheatley's confidence, and that's a two-way street. The staff has confidence to put him in. He has confidence to perform well. Well, what that would do for the Iowa bullpen. Skipped it low and out, ball two. First pitch he's really lost control of there. But, yeah, you're exactly right. If Just as as he kind of, you know, builds that builds that snowball of good outings, it'll just help him down the road. 2-1 is called a strike, 2-2. Two and two. Count even. Out of the windup, the pitch from Wheatley. Ground ball left side. Seeger's charging hard. He'll step, he'll throw. There's out number three. And before we take you to a break of a scoreless top of the six, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Seven to one, Iowa with the lead as we go to the bottom of the six. Now let's take that commercial break. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. While farmers work hard to grow the best crop, their Iowa corn checkoff investments are hard at work too. Opening local and global markets for corn and corn-fed products. Educating drivers on unleaded 88 as the best fuel at the pump. Finding new uses for corn and sharing the farmer's story. Iowa corn farmers are backed by researchers, educators, market experts, and more. To keep corn growing Iowa. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network? It's free for 30 days. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular even faster? Just get a race car driver to be your personal chauffeur. Just let me buckle my... Whoa! Hey, my calls and data work great out here. Test drive U.S. Cellular free for 30 days. Named the leader in 5G coverage in Iowa. You can pull over now, please. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. Visit uscellular.com for details. The 2024 NCAA Division I. Women's basketball, March Madness. John Madness. Evans and John Leo at Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa show. City. Bottom of the six. The Hawkeyes have Sunday, broken the game open a bit, leading 7-1 to in the series opener with sure Western Illinois. We'll Hawkeyes play two tomorrow, a doubleheader tomorrow, beginning at 12.05 in Iowa City. Should be a gorgeous afternoon. Come join us at Banks. If you can't make it to the game, we'll have pregame coverage on the Hawkeye Radio Network beginning at 11.30 tomorrow morning. Kate Obermuller, Marcus Morgan due to get the start. It's not sure the order yet if Cade gets the start in game one or if it's back to Marcus Morgan. We'll have to wait and New see. Pitcher New pitcher Illinois. into the game for the Leathernecks from Chase Carmel, Indiana. Right-handed sophomore standing at 5'11". Chase Golden enters the game. Uh, another uh, right-handed pitcher for the Leathernecks. Golden uh, is making his fifth appearance. He's thrown two and two-thirds innings, and he's allowed 11 earned runs. He's walked six batters, given up six hits. Batters are hitting 462 against him. Golden has a pretty high ERA, 37.12. So we'll have to see how the Hawkeye batters approach him. And the top of the order, Andy Nelson will get the first look at it. Nelson's moved into first base now. And the breaking ball misses just outside to Nelson. He walked and scored in the last inning. Slightly open stance for Andy. 1-0 pitch. In there for a strike, Field. one and for one. Western Illinois, number eight, Max Slavens. Reese Davis comes out of the game for Western Illinois out in left field. Max Slavens is, has entered. Count even at one. Nelson takes high. 
for ball two from the new pitcher into the game, Golden. <clears throat> Starting off the bottom of the sixth, Iowa out in front, seven to one. The Hawkeyes with seven hits. Batted around in the last inning. 2-1 delivery. Nelson check swing. Did he go? He did not. Ball three. Good pitch there. Had him tied up. Just barely held up the swing. Mm -hmm. Good job to slam on the brakes, not commit to it. Sam Peterson on deck for Iowa. Three balls and a strike. The pitch to Nelson. Inside, ouch, hit him in the elbow. And then ricocheted off and hit the catcher. And man, he's going through it behind the plate. He takes off his old fashioned mask and slams it on his thigh. Duran behind the plate's got the backwards batting helmet with the front face mask. And he's just irritated beyond belief. That's the third time he's taken a ricochet. I'm not sure where that one caught him at. It looks like that maybe one. Well, he's just holding his left arm, not really moving it a ton. Man. Andy's got protection on his left arm, so probably didn't hurt him too bad, but back-to-back -back plate appearances where Nelson's earned a free base. A walk and now a hit by pitch. This is Sam Peterson in the box. First pitch to Petey. Up and in, ball one. Petey took a pitch. Yeah, how about that? I think he wanted to swing at it, though, John. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit out of his comfort zone. Peterson with a double. RBI and a run scored today. 7-1 to Iowa in the sixth. Above the eyes, ball two. Golden stats kind of all over the place. John, the new pitcher into the game for Western Illinois with a sky-high ERA and giving up quite a few runs in just two and two-thirds innings. Two balls, no strikes. They'll try a pickoff move over to first. Not right. in time. Three of those six hits have been extra base hits, but yeah, the, the real kickers seem like every guy he's let on base, six hits, six uh, six walks, and that's turned into 11 runs, mm -hmm. so. Here's the 2-0, low and out, ball three. Yeah, doesn't call doesn't call down at all. Right. He, he, he's got to be, you pretty much have to be at the. It's pretty much a rectangle, don't you think? A, a, a narrow rectangle that goes from, from left to right, a horizontal rectangle instead of a vertical one. That seems to be the strike zone. I'd buy that. 3-0 to Petey. That's right down the middle. 3-1. Yeah. Stretches a little bit to the uh, to the right-hand batter's box. and Kind of like or, a diving sorry. board. Yeah. Kind of like a diving board. Yeah, left, <laughs> it stretches to the left-handed batter's box for right-handers, and but doesn't really stretch all the way up to the numbers either. Short lead at first base. Ooh, was Nelson leaning a bit? They throw it over, and he dives back in. That's certainly a very reasonable count to run on here. You're going to expect Petey to put the ball in play at 3-1, and Nelson with good speed, get him on the move, let him score on something in the gap. There goes Nelson. The 3-1 is fouled off over to the right. Ooh, that one. Nice hands there as that ball snuck through the opening at the uh -oh. top. Got through the top of the screen. So it, kind of a little mass a shot, but paying attention to the crowd made the catch. Petey's worked himself into a full count. Nelson takes off again. The pitch is in the dirt. Didn't matter. Ball four. Good job there, and again, a couple free bases. Mm -hmm. We've kind of seen how those can hurt uh, in the Hawkeye season. Third baseman, See if now the Hello. middle of the Hawkeye order can add some punishment here and get deeper into the bullpen. Use Force Western Illinois to use as many arms as possible here today and limit some options for tomorrow. This is Tello. Swings at the first pitch, hits it past the diving third baseman and into left. They're going to wave the runner. Here comes Nelson around third. The throw is just offline. Nelson will score. RBI single, Raider Tello. Good aggressive third base coaching. Good, you know, Andy Nelson not assuming, was going all the way, running hard. With his speed, was able to stretch it out. Iowa made the first free base hurt. 8-1, Iowa out in front, adding to their lead. This is Reese Moore. Designated hitter, Reese 
Bottom of the sixth, Iowa has scored in four straight innings now after getting through two scoreless between these two teams. Iowa's exploded for eight runs now. Moore swings over the top of that pitch and missed it. Yeah, for probably a, uh, an unusual or, or not the way we expected a pitcher's duel to, to develop. It turned into one to start, and Iowa's done their part to break that up. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Golden comes set, ready for the 0-1. Here it is to Reese. Low. I mean, let's go back to this was a this was a three to one game when Jack Young came in. And the Hawks were in trouble at that point. Nobody out, bases loaded. Jack Young comes in, just slams the door shut. Count even at one. Long pause. The pitch to Reese. High and out. Ball two. If I had to guess, if the Hawkeyes go on to win, Jack probably gets the win. I think so. Because that was in the fifth, right? Yeah, it was in the fifth yep. inning, so Brody didn't go enough to, he doesn't get the automatic win. And so I would guess Jack gets the win. Two balls, one strike to Iowa's DH today. Here's the pitch. Lined into the left center gap. It is caught on the run by Slavens, the left fielder. That'll chase the runners back to first and second. Pretty good play there because I thought that ball was going to get down. It hung up a little bit. There's still, it feels like the wind has almost kind of shifted back and it's kind of blowing more toward that pole again. So that little slice into that wind just held up. Left fielder was able to chase it down. Iowa's been shooting the gaps, right? But uh, some speed out in the Western Illinois outfield that have made some nice plays. This is Kyle Huxdorf. They'll try a pickoff move to second base. Peterson head first dive back in. Huck with an RBI double his last time up an inning ago. That was actually Huck's first double of the year. Can you believe that? Two triples and five home runs. <laughs> wow, I wouldn't have expected that. Time called, pitch clock violation. So ball one. So a ball is awarded. The 1-0 to Huckstorf up and in. He turns away from it. Ball two. He was willing to take it off the elbow pad, but didn't really want to take it any higher than that. Yep. <laughs> See if Huck gets something to hit in a 2-0 count with one out. Runners at first and second. Chopper up the middle and gloved by the second baseman. What a play. Underhand scoop to the bag for the force out to get Tello. Tip your cap there. Good defensive play. Well, that's really good because that ball looked like it was going to scoot through. And what happens on the turf is the ball tumbles. You get a little top spin on it. You think it's a nice, big, perfect hop for you, and all of a sudden it shoots forward. Really good job of sticking with it, and then not only not only finding the, the grip on it, but then you know, gathering enough balance to kind of flip it behind him to, to get the force out. More runs out there for Davis Kopp in the Iowa offense. 8-1, runners at the corners and two outs. In the dirt, good, blocked by Duran. Had to move his hips over to the right. Chest forward to knock it down straight back into the turf. Now this would be a group you might run with, with Huck and Petey and try mm -hmm. to steal a run this way. High and out, ball two. Wouldn't be completely afraid of it. Iowa seem to be quiet on the base pass lately. Past few games. 2-0 to cop. Outside. Ball three. Uh, no, not really. Whew. Again, high. But, Must have been high, John. Well, yeah. I, I mean, it's a strike, but it, it's, it's not been a strike today at all. So. 3-0 uh. to cop. Inside. Ball four. Bases loaded for Gabriel Mitchell. 
Again, we're pretty quick to to jump on a strike zone, but the one thing about today's zone is even though it hasn't been a traditional here's the needed need a chest edge of the plate edge of the plate strike the zone it's been a very consistent tall. strike zone there's yep. been one or two outliers but for the most part it's been a very consistent zone mitchell swings at the first pitch ground ball up the middle base hit into center peterson scores here comes hawk 10-1 hawks gable mitchell he's having a great game his third hit and rbis three and four come across i'll bat left-handed i'll bat right-handed whatever you need me to do a couple of two run singles for gable Say nine, I was trying to figure out nine RBIs on the season and give him 13 now. When you get production at the bottom of the order like that, that's a good that's a good thing going. Here's Kellen Strohmeyer, 10-1 Iowa. Time called by Coach Heller. And it looks like maybe a pinch runner for Davis Cop out there at second base. Would make some sense here just to save his uh save his legs nobody's emerged yet and there's ben swales ben swales will pinch runner extraordinaire yeah pinch running head out to base. second base ben swales ben will not catch i don't think ben will catch i'm, <laughs> I'm in agreement with you there kate moss will come into the game to catch would be my would be my guess this is Strohmeyer, 10-1 Iowa with two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Hawkeyes have broken the game open. Pitch to Kellen. Popped up into shallow center. And Palmer comes forward. He's got it for out number three. Kellen missed it. For the Hawkeyes. And Palmer caught it. 10-1 Hawks. We'll go to the seventh after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Our try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports, and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big, bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit Epson.com TV to learn more. Crawling. As a proud Crawling. sponsor of Crawling. the Iowa Hawkeyes, U.S. Cellular wants you to make the most of today by choosing game day traditions first and scrolling later. U.S. Cellular built for us. And all of our contestants will be taking home some 10 to 1 Iowa as we get to the top of the seventh inning. New pitcher into the game for the Hawkeyes. Right hander, a sophomore from Adel, Iowa. Gannon Archer will see Arch on the weekend. Three appearances, two and two thirds innings, two hits, three runs have all been earned, two walks, six strikeouts, one home run allowed. And that was a weird one as it crawled over the fence at Jackson. Jack State there did a really nice job in that game. Gave up a home run that went 334 over a 330, 333 wall. And on the mound, number 35, Gannon Archer. Good part of the order coming up for Western Illinois. Uh, let's see, the Hawkeyes make some changes defensively, or are we all square right now? Should be all square. Don't think we had anybody, I mean, other than Moss behind the plate. So yeah, there, Kate Moss change. behind the plate, yeah. I was wondering because Coach Heller came out and talked to the home plate umpire for, for a minute. But yes, that change is... Cade behind the plate. Bushy. All right, uh, as I was saying, good part of the order coming up for Western Illinois. Two, three, four. Bushy, Duran, and Hevelin. So heads up here for Gannon Archer. Archer with the long black sleeves under his white jersey today, keeping himself warm. Out of the windup, the right hander's ready. Over the top, ball one just outside. 
Arch is going to get that fastball up there in the low 90s. Somehow in the Hawkeye bingo game, I still don't have a bingo. Bad luck for you. They said they gave me a good winning card. They oh. were wrong. 1-0 is inside ball two. Not sure how that was. Are you, are you close, John? I have four in like every single row, <laughs> but I don't have five in any of them. You play bingo a lot? Uh, not <laughs> since my youth <laughs> church days. <laughs> 2 0. Oh. I'm not sure where that one missed. Up and away. Slightly oh, up three. based on, uh, <laughs> on the. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That caught me funny, John. It's probably the best reason to go to church when I was little. <laughs> Here's a 3 0 from Archer. Strike one inside corner. Way to stay alive. Bushy's been solid today. Two for three. Those two hits came off of Brody Brecht. Out of the windup, here's the 3-1 from Gannon. Oh. Fisted over to the left side. Seegers sprinting for it. Cannot get there. Base hit. Boy, Bushy has found the uh, found the holes. As that one's 68 mile an hour off the bat, but another opposite field flared it into the perfect spot. It'll go for a hit. Pitcher. And Adam you could look Durant. back at Archer and say, well, you know, don't fall behind 3-0, three, three and oh, but that wasn't a particularly bad pitch. It wasn't a get-me-over pitch, right? No, he didn't give in. That's a 90-mile-an-hour fastball up and in. And just kind of... A spinner, right? Yeah, just, just off the handle. Just off the handle, up over. Archer deals a strike to start the at-bat to Duran. I almost feel like I should apologize to my parents who are probably listening about my... <laughs> About your church bingo, John? Lack, about lack, going to lack church? Of, lack of piety on the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no balls in a strike. Curveball stays high from Archer, trying to snap that down. It's got a lot of uh, 12 to 6 type of movement. Archer's probably the guy out of the bullpen for Iowa that looks the most like Luke Llewellyn uh, with, the, with the over the top delivery. Yeah, big tall guy. I like that. I like that. 1 1. Much better curveball. Strike two. Yeah, I'm not sure where Duran thinks that one was or if he was just hoping it was out of the zone, but awfully good pitch there. <laughs> one ball, two strikes, nobody out. Runner at first base. Archer comes set. The pitch. Fastball low and out. I want to see him find that same rhythm. He's you know, The curveball, he's a nice rhythm. The fastball, it seems like he's just trying to you can almost see him trying to throw it just that little bit harder and miss the zone on a couple of those. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Archer ready. Here's the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Seegers, gloves, steps on the bag himself, throw to first base, got him for the double play. Really well done there. He, Mitchell was ready for the flip, but there wasn't any good way for Seegers to flip it, so he just took the, took the step or two over, knew that Duran wasn't flying down the line, so he had time and turned over two for the Hawks here in the top of the seventh inning. Second double play of the afternoon for Iowa, and it wipes the bases clean. Here's J.R. Hevelin. Archer gets to go back to the windup. I was just saying, unfortunately, I have already marked off that square in my bingo mm. card, so I didn't need that one. Doesn't count for extra points, does it? <laughs> nope, does not. Strike one from Archer to Hevelin. 0 for 2 today with a couple of strikeouts. I could use a Huxdorf catch in foul territory somehow. Would knock off two squares. <laughs> There's no way. That's all. No, it's there? a center fielder and a foul territory, oh. so I can get them both that way. <laughs> That's a little greedy, John. I'm sure, I understand the uh, the unlikeliness <laughs> of that, but I was going to say nobody's winning with that one. <laughs> Huck out in center, catching one in foul territory. That's good. I'm trying to figure out what was it. It was like the third inning when somebody won. <laughs> Been struggling ever since. Just the right combination, I suppose. One one from Archer. Breaking ball, ooh, just inside. A touch high as well, two and one. Hawkeye triple would work for me. We'll see if we get that in the bottom of the seventh. Two balls and a strike, base is empty, two outs. Archer out of the windup, the pitch from Gannon. Check swing, did he go? No. Pitch was pretty close, it was too high though, ball three. Yeah, that one was elevated, and certainly with today's zone, you're not gonna get that call at all. A three and one count. Uh, 
Now for the second time this inning, we'll see how Archer responds. Swing and a miss, throw it right by him. With a 91 mile an hour fastball, good aggressive pitch there. And that's again, you just want to see this Hawkeye staff. You don't have to nibble the edges here. Go attack these hitters. Full count pitch to the plate on Ooh. the ground right side under Andy Nelson's glove. Strohmeyer will pick it up, send a strong throw into second base. It gets by Seegers. Tello is there to back it up. We'll see what that goes as. That's should probably be an error, but we're going to flash up ahead. Kyrie Alexander. That was hit maybe a step and a half to Nelson's left. And I, I again, I know you don't watch. Uh, I know you haven't seen Major League, but that's uh, there was a little bit of a little bit of an ole. Andy was maybe expecting a hop there, and he didn't get it. Um. Archer has to work a bit harder now, a bit longer with Kyrie Alexander coming to the plate. He has one of the, well now up to six hits for Western Illinois. He's got one of them. It's funny again, we were talking about it. That ball's right at the bottom edge of the zone. Fouled back to the screen, but one and one. But we've really been kind of squeezed. You, you get you get the, the literal bottom of the zone if the ball's in it, and then you get up to kind of the uh, you know, half of that top third, yeah, and so the border of the zone. Yeah, so it's it's been up and down. You know, vertically, it's been a very sl a very small zone. One one is hit out of play over to the right. One and two now, and I think with that being said, uh, not too many free bases. I guess I was walked six batters, but but those were all early. Yeah, it those doesn't, were all Brody. Yeah, it doesn't feel uh, like. Hawkeyes have been out of the zone too much. Here's the one-two from Archer. Line drive off his back and into center field. Ouch. Two on and two outs. Yeah, that breaking breaking ball, he hung up in the zone a little bit. Got enough out of the way to not take the full, the full brunt of it, but more of the, uh, the glancing blow, which is easy for the old guy to sit in the booth and say, but... Well, th those almost uh, hurt maybe a little bit more too. Wow. The ones that, that skim across the the surface of your of your skin through your jersey. That one probably didn't feel too good off of Archer's back. And now, after getting the first two outs, back to back batters single, and Archer starts ball high. Well, the Iowa fans are going to chirp the home plate umpire just a touch now. Ball was high again. I mean, it is. Right. One zero delivery. Yeah, there's the breaking ball. That's a strike. Dropped in. If you want to draw a parallel, Sam Peterson got called out on a pitch that was higher than that at Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if we want to talk strike zone. Yeah. Draw a parallel. Shoot. I'm just trying. A frame of reference, <laughs> maybe better. The one one. I was about to come to a crossroads, John, a little bit different than a, than a parallel there with that down there in Georgia. <laughs> and so we did, we, we have learned, obviously, with Coach Heller being involved in this game, that uh, uh, the ejection does not apply to the head coach, it applies to assistants and players. The, yeah, the suspension. The yeah. suspension of the extra game. Good to see Coach Heller today. Low and out. Cade Moss behind the plate doing a nice job to block it. Coach seemed uh, in a good mood, ready to start the, the weekend series. We've always had great encounters with, with Coach. Oh, the, the access that, that the staff allows. Yeah, the 100% uh, with how much, uh, how much we're allowed to be around the team, where we're, where we're allowed to go, things we're allowed to do. 2-2 from Archer. Beautiful pitch. Gannon goes to the uh, curveball out of his quiver, and so Archer we'll sets on, down no Loomis no to end reason. the top of the seventh. Iowa leads it 10-1. to one. Let's stretch things out at Banks. Hey, Hawk fans, it's time for the Blue Bunny seventh inning stretch. You know what to do. Get up, stretch those legs, right, and go fans, enjoy the best seventh inning stretch inning tradition stretch of all. Blue Bunny ice Blue cream. Bunny. Blue Bunny is a proud you know sponsor of the Hawkeyes and the seventh inning legs. stretch. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. Take me out to... 
Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! The big game. Family. Friends. We know you count on Alliant Energy to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. Whether you're watching the game, cooking your famous burgers, or leaving a light on for loved ones. For us, it means going beyond the expected to make sure we're planning for the energy you need today and tomorrow. That way you can keep your eye on the ball and focus on what's most important to you. Find out more at AlliantEnergy.com slash Powering Beyond. For a taste of unique flavors you'll love, stop by Molly's Cupcakes in downtown Iowa City for homemade cupcakes, cookies, cakes, bars, and coffee drinks. Molly's Cupcakes is a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. How often do you go to Molly's Cupcakes? Ever? I've got a little bit of a sweet tooth, uh, John, so why I ask. Every, every now and again, you know how I like uh, to, to find a donut shop when we're on the road. Uh, every, every once in a while. Really hard to beat the maple bacon donut we had in Jacksonville, Alabama, John. I know that sounds just delicious to you, doesn't it? I don't think you took me to the donut shop in Jacksonville, Alabama. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. There, was, there was a little... Bitter about that Yeah, already. a little division between us right now. <laughs> what happened to, we'll go for a walk and grab a donut? <laughs> it was raining, John. I didn't want you to melt. <laughs> One and one to Seegers to start the bottom of the seventh. Sweetness is very rarely anything I'm accused of. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Iowa up 10 to one in the bottom of the seventh. Seegers taps it foul in the box. I love the less tense games. <laughs> right. right yeah. Well, I, I will say, uh, maple and bacon, does that, you know, th that seems to be a common... Uh, topping on a donut and I usually don't go for it but the folks inside the shop said hey you gotta try the maple bacon donut and put it in this bag and, and take it home and eat it well it didn't make it out of the shop I tell you that I didn't take it anywhere <laughs> Is that the combo you'd go for sweet and salty like that generally not but it, your, your two flavors I would eat Seegers lines this into right center field it is caught what a catch by Bushy he slid and caught it in the gap for out number one. Wow. Have yourself a game, Liam Bushy. I know it's 10 to 1, but holy cow, Big has he been man. good. Three hits and then that catch there. And with a with a run rule in effect today, we just learned, you know, a run for Iowa in this inning would win it. That is for now for Western Illinois a, a game saving play. Bushy has four put outs, three hits. <laughs> <laughs> He's certainly their MVP today. Top of the order for Andy Nelson. He's reached and scored his last two times in the box. 1-0 pitch to Nelson. Ooh, up and in. Got him in the head. Look out. Nelson will... Hop up and sprint to first base. I think it might have caught him in the shoulder, really, but he lost his helmet. And that thing was like a, a it's like it's like Andy had a magnet in his helmet, and the ball just kept coming and coming. He tried to get out of the way and he couldn't. Yeah, he throws a he throws a, a fastball with some arm side run to it, which just means it keeps working in on right handers. And so as that ball goes up, I you know I've heard you say it a couple times, kind of a heat seeking, and it just kept working up and in. Good job from Andy to dive out of the way and minimize damage there. We'll see Sam Peterson come to the plate. Iowa up 10 to 1 in the bottom of the seventh inning. One run will win it for the Hawks. You know, Golden is uh, lowest on the team, and in, in he has the highest ERA of any mm -hmm. Leatherneck. Nobody in the bullpen. I think they'd like to see him, for better or for worse, finish this game up, whether it's this inning or next inning or, or whatever. Right. You, you were kind of on to something, you know, a couple of innings ago when Iowa really started to break the game open, especially with the doubleheader tomorrow. And Coach Heller talked about 
their bullpen a little bit short-handed, and so uh, that's plagued them a bit this season. Um, not quitting or giving up, but just saying, "Hey, you got us in this one, Hawks." Well, you got to pick your spots. Yep. I mean, two zero. Peterson hit it on the ground to short. Flip to second for one. Quick turnover to first is in time. They call Peterson out at first base, and a double play will end the inning. So the game will continue. Ten to one, Iowa. We're back for the Over eighth the right after this. It's Iowa no baseball one. from Learfield. No errors. No one. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Have the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for your chance to win exclusive NASCAR prizes. Now See complete rules and details at IALottery.com slash VIP. Top of the eighth, Iowa out in front 10 to 1 in the opener. Nine hits for the Hawks, seven for Western Illinois. And I will bring in the new pitcher. Hawkeyes turning to redshirt senior from Clive. The left-hander, Ben Dete. Three appearances, two innings, four hits, three runs have all been earned, one walk, four strikeouts. Of those four hits, three have been extra base hits. So now Ben's been fighting a little bit with confidence, so it'd be nice to see him jump up there and own it. Yeah, has a... Uh, has not traveled the past couple of uh, uh, the, the uh, last weekend. And so stayed home, got some work in. And work on getting that confidence back, Ben Dete. The left-hander fires and a swing and a miss by Slavens. Not a ton of left-handers in the lineup for Western Illinois, but this first batter he comes in, he gets to face one. Fly ball down the line and left. It'll spin over to the western illinois bullpen foul ball nothing in two and that did get a few more people moving in the western illinois bullpen so we'll see slavens gets a piece of that and fouls it off nobody's throwing though there's just people moving i had to take a look for myself because i didn't know if you were making a joke because of the foul ball or if people <laughs> were actually up and throwing because we're playing another inning <laughs> 0-2 from Dete. Swing and a miss. Hard fastball on the outside corner. Strikeout for Ben. Good fastball for Dete there, 90 miles an hour, which is kind of about where he is. He can, he can get it up a little bit Center faster. Fielder, Boy, then change up and slider. A really big change of change of pace pitches for him. Time called. Home plate umpire. Ben was looking a bit unkempt. <laughs> He wishes that Ben would tuck his jersey in a little bit tighter. All right, sure. Grant Palmer is the batter. Dete deals. Swing and a miss. Sharp breaking ball. That was a, yeah, just dropped that down and in. Went right at the back foot. Good pitch. That one's too low, and Cade knocks it down. I know, again, the numbers geek in me. That last pitch, the spin rate was 700 RPMs. It was almost a knuckleball coming mm. in there, just no movement. The bottom just falls out of it with the splitter. How about that one? Down and in, and just puzzled Palmer, and he swung at it and missed it. Yeah, 14 inches of break there as it's coming right at you. 
One, two. Right down Main Street. Called third strike. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Ben Dete. That's a and that's how you teacher. own an at-bat there. It's just it's breaking ball in toward the back foot. You know, kind of, okay, hey, is that going to be that one again? Nope, that was the fastball mm -hmm. right down the middle. Shortstop, Jackson Horn. Good variety of pitches kept him off balance and sent him back to the dugout. Here comes Jackson Horn, the shortstop for Western Illinois. Ball one. Home plate umpire read that one the whole way. He was skipping out of the way to make sure he didn't catch it in the mask. Out of the windup, Detay's ready. Here's the pitch. Ah, low again. Missed a couple times at the fastball. Home plate umpire was doing a shimmy on that one, too. He's picking it up right out of the hand. Yeah, he's, he's seeing it really well. He's still short sleeves here, and this gets colder. 2-0, hit on the ground. Seegers at short. He gets around it. Strong throw over to first base. And a 1-2-3 inning Four in the top Illinois of the eight. eight. No runs, no One run will win it for the Hawks. No We're back after this. Eight. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers, or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game, or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Oak Knoll's mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through Life Care, a not-for-profit life plan community. Serving the Iowa City community for 57 years, Oak Knoll's conveniently located near the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, and downtown Iowa City. A proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics, visit oaknoll.com to learn more. 10-1 Iowa in the bottom of the eighth. Run rule in effect, so a run in this inning for the Hawkeyes will win it. Wind is slightly blowing out to right, not nearly as much as it was earlier today. We will say the opposite tomorrow. I like you're trying to build this up for that. Yeah, the tomorrow is <laughs> gonna be uh, breezy. Mm -hmm. I just hope it's not blowing in here. Ball one from Golden to Tello. If that's the case, we need to displace the Big Ten Plus guys, switch them to here. We go over there and we your, get we get the window break. Look at your uh, game plan, John. 1-0 is high to Tello. I'm not sure if we've ever discussed this, but I don't like to be cold. You do not. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? So far, so good. You're okay tonight? I'm not exceptionally warm, but I have lots of layers on. Yeah. I can feel my hands. <laughs> I went for the... Uh, I was hot at 4 o'clock. That was the plan. 2-0, Tello. Mm -hmm. Pulls it foul over to the left. Because I knew at 7 o'clock I wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I was I was planning for that. Although, you know, with our daylight savings time switch, at least now we still have some sunlight. As the yeah, way. whatever. Last week it would be pitch black by now, right? And I'd, or, be, and I'd be cold. Yeah. 100% <laughs> I'd be cold by now. The Hawkeyes trying to end the game in the bottom of the eighth. Up 10 to 1. We'll have a doubleheader tomorrow beginning at 12.05. 2-1 to Raider, breaking ball high and out, ball three. I think the Hawks can be selective in the pitches that they swing at, especially to get some traffic on the base paths. Yeah, again, we, we kind of talked about the stats beforehand with with uh, with Golden, and he's not, uh, he doesn't fill up the zone. The 3-1 in the dirt. Raider walks. For the second time today to start the bottom of the eighth. Our eight walks in his four and two thirds innings. Now nine. He's actually walked more guys than he's given up hits. So 
Not that I wouldn't want to see Reese deposit one in the uh, commuter parking lot or bounce one into the dental lot here and, <laughs> yeah. and call, it a, call it a night. Get out of here just a touch early. Raider at first base. Reese Moore, the batter, crowding the plate from the left side. Golden deals. High and out, ball one. And Golden really struggling here at this point with finding the zone. And yeah, it's it's his game. He's either gonna get he's either gonna get three outs or he's gonna give up a run. And, but there's there's no in between. I don't mm -hmm. think at this point. Downstairs, ball two. That's unfortunately got to be a pretty lonely feeling out there at that point. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, because we saw Telford. The pitch to Moore. Lined into the right center gap. It's down. Tello hesitated for a moment. He has to stop at second base. You know, Jacob Greenan has seven appearances, so he's appeared in about half the games. Uh, Kratz, who you mentioned early, is Kratz also the four saves and two starts. What an interesting mix. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's just we need outs. We're going to trust Kyle you to come get them. Uh, but, you know, those are the three guys with seven appearances. Otherwise, um, you've got Kaczynski with six and then some guys with five. So, um, you know, it, it really is bullpen by committee for, for Western. Kyle Huxdorf into the box for Iowa. 10-1 to 1 Hawks. Bottom eight. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. The pitch to Kyle. Swing and a miss. He was trying to end it with that one. 87-mile-an-hour fastball. Kind of at the top of today's strike zone, so a pitch is probably called a strike if he doesn't swing at it. And again, I like the good, aggressive rip at it. Breaking ball outside to Huck. He just hasn't been particularly close on his no. breaking ball. So if you can if you can identify that and see it, then you you've really got a got an opportunity to do some damage. One one pitch to Huckstorf outside ball two. Check on Tello's lead at second base. See how far off the bag he is. A base hit could win it. Kyle sends a chopper to the left side. The shortstop will pick it up. He'll throw to second for one. That's the only play. Huxdorf gets through the bag at first. Runners at the corners. The Huck and Tello combo could have saved Cade Moss and at bat here. Yeah. Still still playing it safe with Cade. Well, and I, and I talked to Cade before, and you know, Cade it's Moss. getting better. Uh, the hand injury. The hand injury, the hammock bone, but. The hand still hurts, you know, the, the, to make contact, the, the, particularly with the, the swinging. And so he's, he's obviously not 100% yet. Um, you know, if the game weren't 10 to 1, if you weren't trying to 10 run rule it, I could certainly see a bunt here. Ball in the dirt and gets away from the catcher for a moment. That allows Huxdorf to get to second. You know, and that takes away the double play. But a 10 to 1, that might feel a little. Yeah. Uh, a little not great. Not Coach Heller's style. Infield comes in now for Western Illinois with the winning run 90 feet away. One ball, no strikes. The pitch to Moss. Ground ball left side. Third baseman picks it up. Tello's trying to score. Here's the throw to the plate. Now caught in a pickle between home and third, and Tello is tagged out. Mm. I'm not completely against what Raider did there. He just maybe, maybe one beat too soon. Um, well, uh, Coach Heller comes out of the dugout and and uh, gives Raider a fist pump. So baseman. yeah, I, I mean, I think it was kind of what you know, he, the third baseman kind of looked away and looked back, and and obviously Raider should know that tactic being a third baseman. <laughs> right. But he, you know, he gave him a chance and he stayed in the rundown then long enough to let Moss get to second. Mitchell drives this into the gap in right center. It is down for a base hit. One run is in. That's all it took. And the Hawkeyes win it 11 to 1. I think he'll get both of those. Have yourself a day, Gable Mitchell. What a what an outstanding outstanding day at the plate for Gable Mitchell. He's probably the player of the game. Four hits for Gable. 
And the Hawks win it via run rule. Final score in Iowa eight innings. 11 to 1, Hawks win it. I think, yeah, again, you're cheating a run. I think it's going to be 12 to 1. They're both going to score. No? Doesn't appear to be the case on the on the formal stat sheet. We'll see. We'll see what Sam comes up with in the room next door to us. But anyway, Iowa wins it in a run rule in eight innings on Gable Mitchell's, I'll go ahead and say it, pretty much career day. Three hits, four hits, and five RBIs for Mitchell. All right, we'll take a break. We'll wrap things up when we come back. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Their next conclude their three game series. Travel home safely, and we hope to see you back at Bank. John Evans really and John Leo. Post game after I was 11 to 1 win in eight innings Hawks. over Western Illinois. Jack Young picks up the win for the Hawks. Jason Buell gets the loss. All right, John Evans, your highlights of today's game. What stood out to you the most? Uh, no walks from the bullpen. Whoa. I mean that, and and actually no, no hit batters. So, you know Brody, Brody unfortunately walked six, eight strikeouts. So, you know runs your pitch count up high. Struggled there in the fourth inning, uh, but after that the Hawks really cut out the free bases. Archer gave up, uh, gave up three hits. Was helped out with a double play though to avoid giving up a run. Uh, but but really that that to me was was the key was. Western Illinois didn't get, after Brody left the game, Western Illinois didn't get any help uh, from Hawkeye pitchers or fielders. Iowa now eight and nine on the season. Western Illinois drops to four and 12. Doubleheader tomorrow with the Leathernecks beginning at 12.05. We'll have Coach Sutherland joining us in just a moment. Let's take a break. We'll be back with highlights right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Opener 11 to 1 over Western Illinois. Hawkeyes improving to 8 and 9. Western Illinois drop, dropping to 4 and 12. Jack Young gets the win. Jason Buell gets the loss today. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds for station ID. We're back in just a moment. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Back inside the broadcast booth, we're joined now by associate head coach 
Marty Sutherland. Coach, I, I hope I gave you a little bit more time this time. Maybe not too much, but uh, congratulations on the win today. I'm, I'm so fat now. I need like 25 <laughs> minutes, so that's just what we're going to do. Um, just, you know, a lot of really good things. Obviously, Jack Young, you know, coming in in that situation to get out of that in a tight game. You know, bases loaded, nobody out, gets out of that jam. Big double play turn in the middle. Not an easy one, you know. Uh, really good turn by Michael and Gable and and Blake with the pick. So, um, and then out of the pen, no free bases, right? You know, after that, Chaz, Gannon, Ben, you know, does do a really good job. You know, we just give up the three hits, but no walks. I thought Ben was really sharp. Uh, and I thought Chaz was really sharp. And Gannon gave up some hits, but, but just really good to see him battle through it. Really happy for him. So, um, really good job by those guys. And I thought, you know, after the first time through, um, I didn't think we we did a good job with what the plan was the first time through. Um, but then after that, I thought we locked back in and we really made it hard on him. We didn't chase, um, which is the name of the game with that left hander. He's kind of a softer guy and he does a really good job with the with the change up of, of it being a strike to ball. And, and really the discipline on that pitch was going to be really important. He doesn't give up hits on it. He gives up a lot of ground balls. I thought we chased it some early and then we really held our ground late and, and the at bats just were way better in the last half of that game. Uh, were you getting some Maybe so, were you reminiscing a little bit with Buell being similar to uh, Cornelius on Sunday in, in the approach? Did you make any changes mid-game? No, we just you know we just kept talking about it. Like, listen, we we have to do a good job of giving him some strikes. And what I mean by that is is you know he's a guy that's going to live on you know the outside edge, his arm side edge, right? So as a right-hander, you got to be willing to take the pitch on the edge and. Give, a, give them that strike yeah. or give the one at the bottom because that's going to keep you from chasing the one that's further um, and just hold the zone and, and get him onto the white of the plate. And I thought we did, you know, Gable had a great night, but I think about his, his two-strike hit uh, right-handed down the right field line. That was a big hit to get us going, you know, with two strikes on a changeup, um, you know, and he had just a great night, uh, whatever. Had, I think he had four two-out RBIs and, and stung the ball. And I thought we had some bad luck. I mean, Michael Michael hit the ball really hard all night. The kid right fielder makes two really nice plays um, left fielder makes a really good play on Reese um, so I thought we had some bad luck as well but overall I just thought the guys really locked in and executed what we talked about after the first couple innings and it shows we walk eight times we only punch twice you know we get hit you know another three or four times we always talk about wanting that number to be at least even or or offset on the side of, of base on balls and hit by pitches, and we did that today. So um, really good job and, and just happy for, for a lot of different reasons and some things that, you know, we hadn't been doing well, you know, specifically out of the pen, the free base stuff, you know, to come through to get three innings out of the pen and, and no free bases. I mean, that's that's where we got to get to um, to have a chance to kind of go on a run and, and get, you know, maybe playing to the caliber we think we, we're capable of. And, and now a doubleheader tomorrow. Coach, we start at noon, so it's a bit of an early morning for the guys. Uh, those always make me kind of nervous. Well, they're tough games. I mean, you think about it, it's basically three games in a matter of what, you know, 12 to 20 hours or, yeah. or whatever it is. Um, you know, so it, it does test you a little bit, and tomorrow's going to be a, <laughs> a pretty raw day. I mean, we're going to have way higher winds. It's going to be not as nice as it was today. Perfect world, you probably play two today, but we just couldn't, we weren't in a position to do that with our travel, with their travel. Um, so tomorrow is the day to do it, but it's going to be it's going to be one of those days where the tougher team's going to win. 18 innings, we need we need to get a couple starts, you know. And I think you know if you think back to even Brody's start today, I think you know pitchers are 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 so the routines are so important, mm -hmm. right? And if you think about you know how Brody's week went talked about closing him against Georgia because he had a low pitch count on Friday the week prior. It's his bullpen day. And I think that just changes it. And then we have a really tra tough travel day coming home. And, you know, I just think some of that, you know, when you look at look at his outing, it just we were we took him out of that routine. And that, that you know, people can say that doesn't matter or shouldn't matter, but it certainly does. And I think that was a part of it. You know, hopefully Marcus and, and Cade, you know, Cade just build on the on the start he had the last time. Marcus get back going. I know him and Sean had a really good pin uh, yesterday. So, um you know, that's what we need. We need two quality starts when you're trying to cover 18 innings. That's the biggest thing. And, and anybody who gets, you know, starters to the sixth or seventh inning, that's going to be the advantage because of all the, all the outs you're trying to cover in one day. So um, it'll be a tough day. You know, our guys will be ready to go. And, um, yeah, anytime you get a play, it's a great day. Right? Yeah, so that's right. That's, that's, the, that's the gist of it. Great win today, Coach. Thanks for coming up. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland on our post-game show from 
bank. Hawks win it 11-1 to in a run rule in eight innings. We're back with highlights right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Jeff Grunder, let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today for the best home comfort system you can buy. It's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. All right, let's go over some of the highlights from today's 11-1 Hawkeye winner. 2-1 pitch. Here it comes. Ground ball up the middle. Mitchell backhands it. Throw from shallow center. Got him at first base. How about that play? Gable Mitchell, yes. Here's the 2-2. Called third strike. High outside corner. Brody got him. Michael choked up on the bat, the 3-2. Blooped into right, hooking towards the line. It is down for a base hit and into the corner. Garen chugging around second. He'll get to third base. Mitch Bow puts up both hands. Stop right on that bag, Blake. He'll stay at third. It's a double for Seeger. One out, Seeger's at third. Here's Peterson swinging at the first pitch, drives it deep to left. It is over the left fielder's head and to the wall. Peterson around first. He's at second with an RBI stand-up double. The Hawks have the lead. It's two to one. One ball, two strikes. The pitch, ground ball, left side. Seegers, backhand stop, throw to second for one. On to first, double play. How about that? Jack Young, you bet. He gets out of the jam in a great six, four, three, double play. Huxdorf drives this to left, carrying well, and it'll move the left fielder back. One hop off the wall. One run is in. That's Peterson. It's an RBI double for Huxdorf, jumping on the first pitch. 5-1 Hawks. A one. Mitchell shoots it into left field. Base hit. Tello will score. They're going to wave another run. Here comes Huck around third. The throw is up the line at third base. Two RBI single. Gable Mitchell. And it's 7-1. Here's the pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Seegers, gloves, steps on the bag himself, throw to first base. Got him for the double play. 2-2 from Archer. Beautiful pitch. Gannon goes to the curveball out of his quiver, and Archer sets down Loomis to end the top of the seventh. Mitchell drives this into the gap in right center. It is down for a base hit. One run is in. That's all it took. And the Hawkeyes win it 11-1. to Iowa run rules Western Illinois tonight 11-1 to in eight innings. We'll be right back here tomorrow. First pitch at noon for Saturday's doubleheader with the Leathernecks. We'll wrap up the series with Western tomorrow. Pre-game coverage starts at 11.30 a.m. Would love to have you at the ballpark. Going to be a decent day, maybe a bit windy, but uh, come on out to Banks and cheer on this Iowa Hawkeye baseball team. If not, our pregame coverage begins at 11.30. We'll talk to you then. For my great board op down the line, Jason, excellent job today, Jason. Thank you very much. My broadcast partner, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long from Dwayne Banks this evening. Iowa wins it 11-1. to Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by hy V. Score big savings with the new hy V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. 
Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.